This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. Wow! <laughs> And away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4051. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill, the Ted Smith, <laughs> and my cock. Montgomery! And you are in the men's room. On tap today, the return of Who Sucks Less. We will play profile this. Plus headlines, the men's room shot of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite. TV time with Ted. Quack, quack. I'm going to go. All right, here we go. An Illinois man breaks up with his girlfriend, then wins one million on a scratch-off game. <laughs> Meanwhile, a man is in handcuffs in the back of a cruiser and is shot, and it's Nutty who gets the blame. The pastor was giving people free meth if he could watch their sexy time. It turns out the manager at a Walgreens, yep, he was in on the crime. And a, quote, gangster throws up pizza all over a Denny's, which is shocking. Denny's has pizza. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. Okay, in case you didn't know, uh, today is Valentine's Day, the day that everyone in a relationship, frankly, you're on the hook to do something. And at the very least, at least mildly romantic. Now, maybe you'll go to dinner or buy flowers or buy chocolate or all of the above. Whatever you do or don't do, it's meant to express your love. And who knows? Maybe you're blindly, hopelessly head over heels in love. And if you are, good for you. But that doesn't mean there isn't something or several somethings about your significant other, well, that frankly drive you freaking insane. I love my wife. I do. We've been through a lot together. But I don't know why, after 20 years, she still thinks daily that I know what I want for dinner at 9 o'clock in the morning. I do not know. I will never know. And I have never known. Why do you keep asking? It's just what she does. Now, sure, that's not the worst thing, but it's one of those things. We had a woman call our show yesterday who's very dedicated to her husband and stands by his side. Unless she knows he's going to eat deviled eggs, in which case she will travel in a separate vehicle. I think you understand why. Again, not the worst thing in the world, but that's her thing, and it's annoying. But that's how relationships go. Now, sure, you can give a Valentine's Day card that explains all the things that you love about someone, but today, we want to hear about all the things 
you don't love about that same person that you love so much. You know, that person where you go, I love you in spite of, and then you rattle off the list. With those faces, that's the truth of relationships. So today's question is past or present. What thing about your significant other drives you crazy? To be a part of the big show, call 206-803-ROCK. You can like The Men's Room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send your emails to the men's room at KISW.com. Yo, next round is about to start. You ready? Yeah, yeah, just shopping for a car in Carvana. For real? Yeah, Carvana makes it super convenient to shop whenever, wherever. For real? That's a ton of car options. Yep, and these are all within my price range. For really real? You can afford that? Yeah, with Carvana. And boom, just like that, I'm getting it delivered in a couple days. For really, really real? You just bought a car. For real, and you just lost my turn. Visit Carvana.com to shop for thousands of vehicles under $20,000. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. In the new year, getting healthier is a big priority, especially for Hero Bread. With a new recipe using heart-healthy olive oil, Hero Bread serves up 0 to 1 gram of net carbs, up to 11 grams of protein, and high fiber in every delicious serving. And they're now using olive oil, an antioxidant-rich oil shown to reduce cholesterol and minimize the risk of heart disease. Try it today with code IHM10 for 10% off your purchase at hero.co. That's hero.co. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Oh, but tell us where we go. Welcome to Season 19, Episode number 4051. What a large and in charge program do we have for you today? Guaranteed future repeat. Oh, Happy yeah. Valentine's Day, everybody. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's an exciting day, isn't it? I spent the movie on uh, the Hallmark Channel, watched a, a rom com about 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I spent the day, got a look. Does Hallmark do uh, Valentine's I know Christmas is their big oh, time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, basically every movie on there is Valentine's movie. You know what? You're right. Yeah. It's Thanks. also Ash Wednesday, Mom. That's right. Happy also Ash, Ash Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Hallmark yeah. Channel, once again. We should have done a question about Ash Wednesday. Yeah, Mike and I were discussing that going, until you know that a lot of Catholics put the, the ash cross on their forehead, when you don't know that. And and we were in radio. In fact, we were in our old building, but we're here in Seattle. And uh, one of our sales ladies, she walked and and she was the type of person, uh, much like us at that time, where there's a very good chance that she was super hungover when you saw her in the morning mm-hmm. or still drunk and headed toward hangover. Anyway, kind of a living mess. And I see her, her cross didn't look like a cross. It just... It was a big swatch on her forehead, so I'm like, hey, man, are you okay, man? She's like, yeah, why? I said, oh, you, you got something on your forehead. And she says, are you effing with me? And I'm like, no, seriously, man, you have something on your forehead. Because, again, I don't know this is the thing. So she goes, well, it's Ash Wednesday. I said, okay, you still have how, something on your how forehead. How could you have gone that far in life explored. and never have seen that before? I'd never seen it before, man. I'd never seen it before. Honestly, and I don't know how. I was in my, what, early 40s, That's mid-30s. That's what I'm saying, like, I'd never seen it. Huh. Okay. I, mean, I feel like at Baltimore, there was a lot of it. I just, I never saw it, man. It's Seriously. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Happy Ash Wednesday, yeah. everybody. What's going on with your head, man? <laughs> Huge program uh, for you today. Large and in charge. The exciting return of Who Sucks Less. Uh, Steve, you bring us three stories from the news each and every week. They all suck. It is up to us to determine out of the three stories which one sucks the least. How are we looking today? Oh, you know, it's just people on bad behavior. I think it's the best way to put it. It's not the... <laughs> Well, one of them's really bad. Now that I'm looking at it, it goes again. beyond bad behavior. It's like this okay. was unnecessarily bad behavior. Okay, of the three mm-hmm. stories, I would say uh, we have a judge, bad right. behavior, and should definitely do better. And she has stepped down since. We have oh. kids at a party. You know what happens when you have teens at a party? Yeah, they went a little overboard, and then uh, some 
bullying. No, none of these were necessary. Nobody gained no, anything you're right. from any none of this. None of them were necessary, yes. Who sucks less <laughs> is coming up, and uh, today on the program, we're going to talk about uh, love, as today is Valentine's uh, Day, and how much love. you love someone. And this is a true, and new. true test of love, uh, as far as what you can put up with other people. But to give you a little, uh, give you a little backstory here, as far as uh, the day that we are celebrating today. How did it start? What are the origins of this? Uh, Valentine's Day, they say, is a time to celebrate romance, love, kissy face. Uh, Mouth hugs. Yeah, but the origins of the festival of candy and cupids are actually dark, bloody, and a bit muddled. Though no one has pinpointed the exact origin of the holiday, one place to start is ancient Rome. Of okay. course. Yes. The Romans celebrated the feast of Lupercalia. Uh, the men sacrificed a goat. And then they sacrificed a dog. Okay, well, we did that this morning. My wife and I do try to be traditional with that. Then they whipped women with the hides of the goat. animals. We do. I do the goat. Uh, my wife does the dog. And then, yes, much like the Romans, I then flogged her with the skin yeah. of the sacrifice. So animal. once you get the skin of the goat of the dog, you whip women with the hides of the animals that they had just slain. We're explaining this to the kids this morning. Mm-hmm. Dad, why, why are you beating mom with that animal? Now, uh, just so you know, the Roman romantics, they were in fact drunk and they were in fact naked. Uh, women Being would line up again. Traditional yeah. Valentines. Women would line up for the men to hit them. They believed this would make them fertile. Also included a matchmaking lottery. Uh, I would be like, who's not fertile? I want to give yeah. that. I which, mean, I'm just saying it's better <laughs> than just being like, well, there's women here. We should whip mm-hmm. them. Yeah, yeah. So they had a lottery in which men drew the names of women from a jar, and then not the, Tina, not Tina, please. God, the Tina. couple would then be coupled for the duration of the festival or longer if they felt like they wanted to stay together. Okay. So then, as Valentine's Day evolves just a little, the festival was more of a theatrical interpretation of what it had once been. It was a little more of a drunken uh, festival, but the Christians, they put clothes back on, but that did not stop it from being a day of fertility and love. And as the years went on, the holiday grew sweeter. Uh, Chaucer, uh, Shakespeare, romanticized it in their work. Thanks, Chaucer and Shakespeare. And eventually it became uh, the uh, holiday we know it today. Of the Hallmark variety and candies and flowers and everything else. And one of the bigger business holidays of the year. No doubt about it. Believe it or not, Valentine's Day. So those are the... So Chaucer and Shakespeare are the people that created the image Uh that we have of it now. So let me just go back. Thanks, Chaucer. Thanks, Shakespeare. It wasn't bad enough reading your crap in school because I hated both of them passionately. You also did this to us. But on the flip side, uh, if you are someone that hates Valentine's Day, you are not alone. The anti-Valentine's Day crowd has been Men. growing for the last few years. According to the Washington Post, they just did a whole big story on it. So, obviously, you've heard the term Hallmark Holiday. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's only pushed on us to sell cards, chocolate, jewelry. Others argue it can actually be harmful to your mental health because single people feel left out and rejected. One part of that argument is kids in school, especially teenagers, who don't have a Valentine. Uh, because of that, more and more people are coming out against Valentine's Day and even celebrating their hatred for the holiday. Now, when I was a kid, we did Valentine's, but we wrote a Valentine for every each and every, every kid in the class, kid in school. Yeah, and you had a bag or whatever, and you threw them in, and there was no discriminating on uh, who you gave uh, Valentines to. It was just understood that everybody in the class is going to get a Valentine. I was doing this last night, and again, look, my kids are in school, and uh, I'm just not good at keeping up with whatever traditions are supposed to go on. So. I realized, I said to my wife last night, if you had told me 20 years ago that this is what I'd be doing, I'd have laughed at you. We were filling bags, uh, Valentine's Day bags, with various candies. Sure. And my wife explained, she said, hey, if you're going to help, just know. So there's a handful of crap, and then make sure each bag gets six Hershey Kisses. So I counted them off, and I dropped six in there, and we'd tie them off. And the, as we got toward the end, she's like, you're a disaster. I'm like, what, what did I do, man? I put six Hershey Kisses in, and she's like... I had, there's three different colors of wrapper. I had, it was going to be two, two, and two. I'm like, look, oh, sorry, man. Ask any of those kids if they care they, they that this care. one, like four of them are pink, yeah. one is silver, and one's white. Now, do you guys, I mean, she's just going the extra mile. I, yeah. but that's what she You'd does. still buy candy and just write two, no. Mike. I have yeah, we 30 yeah. of them. Do you guys, do you guys save uh, whatever the celebration is? Do you save cards when they were given to you? Not anymore. Uh, it depends. I I, like, I have a couple from my mother, because every once in a while, she'll send a really good one yeah. that's mm-hmm. just funny or something. Yeah. So I'm like, I just like this card. But generally, no, I don't keep cards. I save I, cards I, for my grandmother, because she's 90-some years old, and she writes some very uh, sweet and often curt notes. 
Right, right. Uh, that I just think are entertaining, so I want to keep those for just a, a keepsake. I keep the ones, well, I have kept the ones that the kids have given me. I, homemade yeah, cards much, I've kept? Homemade card, it's a much sweeter sentiment. And then I've gotten my wife to keep the cards I give yes. her because whatever the day is, is not the card I'll buy. So this Valentine's Day, the card I got her was, it says baby on the front. Then it says, like, congratulations, a beautiful baby boy, blah, blah, blah. And then I just wrote, because I'm pretty sure that's what people tell you when they show uh, when you show them a picture of me. Oh, congratulations, very nice. beautiful baby boy. So believe it or not, Etsy, you know Etsy, they saw 14% more searches for anti-Valentine's Day merch this year. And 34% more for shirts with sayings like, love is in the air, try not to breathe. Uh, the National Retail Federation found three percent. That seems a little bit harsh the other way. Damn, man! Three percent plan to buy anti Valentine's Day gifts this year. Who do you give anti Valentine's? What is an anti Valentine's? I'm not sure. Like I hate you. So I don't know. And like, look, I'll be dead honest. Like I woke up today, I knew it was Ash Wednesday. I mm. kind of forgot it was Valentine's Day. Right? Okay. I've, yeah. I've had a serious girlfriend a little bit, but. I'm not going to ass on people because they no, want to go no. do stuff for Valentine's Day. <laughs> you want to know? Okay. So 17% of Sucker. the population enjoy Valentine's Day. That's it. 17%. So if, if you're going to say Thanksgiving, in my mind, depending on your family or, or friend dynamic, it's got to be at least 80% that enjoy the holiday, right? Maybe. Well, what is your gripe about Thanksgiving? Maybe you don't like some of the food or you don't like the company or typically you don't, your you don't family like football or, or you have to work. I'm trying to think. Like, I mean, Thrill's right. That's. Those are the two main things you hear. Either there's family members you don't like, or you got to work. You got to work. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yep. like, look, man, you don't even have to like football. Right. Don't watch football. Watch something else. It's so, not like it's the only thing on. And right? also, one of the harder things to do as a guy is to do anything that is somewhat original as far as the standard flowers, candy, and, and dinner thing. Uh, a lot of people are perfectly happy with if, if the guy or the woman cooks a meal at home. Yeah, my wife's making crap. Just, just a home cooked cool. meal, which is which is fine too. It, I mean, it is a Wednesday. It's not that it, the restaurants, as we know, we talk about it all the time. It's typically a fixed menu. You really need to be ahead of your game on planning and mm -hmm. and getting a reservation. And the restaurants are slammed, and they don't like this day either. But it's easier a little bit in the kitchen because it's a limited menu. But that still doesn't make it busy and crazy and everything else. If you work in the kitchen, you hate this day. Yeah, you but do. if you're looking for some, it'll things, be. It, I mean, right? It'll still be busy. It'll mm -hmm. be busy. Yep. It's not. It, you don't mind how much business you get. You hate doing the fixed menu because your muscle yep. memory is to do all these things that you learn how to make on your menu. And then this one day, by the way, whatever does not sell in the fixed menu today will be tomorrow's special. OK, so uh, Google Trends, they looked at some of the uniquely popular Valentine's Day date activities that happen in every state. All right. I'll give you the state. I'll give you the activity. You say if you're down with this night or not. All right. OK, so in uh, let's see, this is a little weird, but in uh, North Dakota. Uh, they go to drive-in uh, movies. So they have outdoor movie night. That's one of the big things right. they do. I, I haven't been to an outdoor movie in years. Wait a minute. Is this for date nights or for Valentine's? For Valentine's. Though? Looking uh, for an alternative? I'm out. You're to, out? Uh, it's, North, it's North Dakota, and it's February 14th. Uh, that's a good call. Right, 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 right. Based <laughs> on the, but, you're, but you're in your own ride. Uh, you're in a car. Uh, Things can happen in a car. I'm just yeah, but Ted's right, man. Just based okay. on the time of you. year in North so Dakota. Right. You guys are out. See, I, I, I yeah. think I'd be down with that. I don't want your cold hands touching my junk. Okay. Uh, in uh, California, in Arkansas, a pottery class is one oh, of the God, unique, out, popular out, Valentine's Day dates. No. I might have fun at a pot. I don't know. If it's going to be like the movie Ghost, well, yeah. I mean, I, 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 maybe I took a class one time in like Bible school or something and I made a clay thing, but for the most part... Yeah, I, I'm with Biles. I, I think we're doing I'd, something. I'd be down with seeing what I could create. Yeah. I mean, I would. I know it sounds dumb. It's not going to take but up all your time. This is my night. Valentine's Day date. Look, man. you get away with this for a date. You guys just go and make a pot or some crap, <laughs> and you have a wonderful hour and a half together. I mean, I, to me, that does not sound. If, if you said that to me, like I'd be like, you know what? Yeah, man, I'll, I'll go do that class. I mean, I don't want to go nine times, but if it's a one-off where I can just make some crap and they put it, but see, you might step into the nine times. Well, you did a really good job. Well, yeah. we had a really good time together, Miles. We should do it again. See, I'm he not also might it. like it. Maybe, maybe I can make a guy maybe, that makes. Stuff. Maybe I can make a really cool clay bong or a porcelain bong. I was gonna say, just make an ashtray. Yeah, some, something that I could actually use. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. All right, so in Arizona and Nevada, uh, the weather is uh, typically warmer this time of year. Not necessarily this year, but uh, mini golf. So you go do a little putt putt golf. All right, that down sounds fun. Sure. I'm down with putt putt golf. Uh, and in Pennsylvania, they do indoor mini golf. Set them down. And, but, you know, like uh, we have, uh, oh, God, what are we? Flat stick? Flat stick Flat pub. stick pub. We, we got yeah, a couple of those, of those in the area. They're fun. Yeah, you can have a beer, yeah, have some food, and play pump. miniature golf. Michigan and Oklahoma, they go bowling. I'm down that with bowling. That sounds about mm -hmm. right.
Bowling is great because, you know what, you can also eat while you're at the bowling alley. That's correct. As far as your dinner goes, just get yourself a pizza, a big basket of french fries, and whatever else is on the menu. You're, you're pretty well golden. And taking it, as far as the affordability of it, you have fun, you eat good food. I mean, and get those three fingers warmed up. That's right. Uh, in Washington State and Montana, I don't know where they get this, but I guess based on whether it's an indoor or outdoor track, they say that go-karting is one of the things. Down with that. But where do you go to go-kart? Oh, well, there's one indoor track south down of Down in Soto. Yeah. I believe. Uh, family Fun Center in Linwood, I believe. I am down with go-karts. Yeah, I would do go-karts. I'm down with bumper beat. cars at Seaside, Oregon. I, I, I like getting in those old cars in fun time. Roller skating is big in Iowa. No, thanks. Believe it or not, Florida. What are they into? Xanax. Everyone wants to go and leave for the winter time to go head south for the summer. And what do they want to do, Mike? Gator wrestling. <laughs> they want to ice skate. Really? What? <laughs> they want to ice skate. I think people in warm weather climates kind of miss right, that It's got to be much more exciting, sure. And if you're ever at the Hotel Coronado in uh, San Diego, they have an ice rink out there at, at Christmas time. And it blows my mind that the damn thing is... Is it real or synthetic? Both. Depending on the depending on the weather. They, they, right. They've done both. Oh, what else do we have? Oh, in Louisiana and Massachusetts, uh, uh, uh. one of the preferred, uh, uniquely uh, popular Valentine's Day dates is to take a cooking class together. Uh, well, it depends on what you're learning to make. If you're if you're learning to make something that you've always kind of had an interest in, but if we could both make it, like what? that's a date that she set up. Well, no doubt about it. Man. She sets Baby, up. Baby, we're gonna go to a cooking class. She sets Yay. up. She sets up fondue where you're cooking at the table. Right. I'm talking about going and learning how to make like a sushi roll, right? Or going and learning how to make something. He that, didn't set that up. I agree. We're with not. That. Look, we're not. Miles, <laughs> we're just saying. Would you go? Would you go? And I'm saying yes. I would not want to, but on Valentine's Day, it's hard to turn down the date. But as far as my interest, I have none of it. If they had a, like a Chinese cooking class, I could learn how to make a good stir fry or something like that. Just yeah. the, the basic ingredients, whether it's, you know, rice wine or whatever I need that I don't really realize. Yeah. You know, just just to learn. I, I would definitely go on that date. Yeah, I would. Because not. you're eating at the end of the night, too. So it's not like your work is going, you know, in the trash can. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, and if it was Chinese food, we could have a lot of miles. I know you would. I would, too. But like, sorry, we got to go to walk. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Let's get it. Uh, New Jersey, other big thing is an escape room, which makes perfect nice. sense in New Jersey because everyone's trying to escape the state anyway. <laughs> That's, That's a pretty good time. A, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, going to an aquarium is the popular thing to do on a date, uniquely popular, and of all places, Hawaii. And to the me, aquarium? this makes no all sense because right. all you need is a mask and a snorkel. Right, like, it's, walk that it's way. It's 87 <laughs> degrees. Go find you a cove, right. and it's all right there. Like, I understand if you're, you know, in Topeka. Sure. Or if you're in Dallas, if you're in an area that's landlocked and you want to go see a shark, I get it. But if not, go see a shark if you want. That makes it exciting. Hey, go sit on the beach, man. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Going to a botanical garden. That is a unique Valentine uh, date in the state of Georgia. Really? I'm not really. I've been to a few. Like the, all right, the, Jap- the Japanese garden uh, here is, is fine in Seattle. The Rose Garden in Portland, it's fine. There's another Rose Garden in Vancouver. It's fine. You just walk around and go, eh, what's that? It just means nothing to me because I'm like, there's flowers right. everywhere. Like, what is it? Also, the Tulip Festival yeah. that people get excited about. My wife's always get like, pictures of the Rose of the Tulip. do you want to go to the Tulip Festival? I'm like, are you out of your yeah. mind? Absolutely effing not. I, That's one of those things. Find your friend that wants to go, but I will... Uh, Basically, it's like you, Star Wars fan. Like, I refuse to do this because also, in the end, when I get there, it's tulips, right? And they go, "Yeah," and I'm like, "I know what they well, look like. George, I've never been excited about them. Being surrounded by millions of them means nothing." I mean, look, I think the tulip fields look good, but I have no desire to go. No. Like pumpkin patches, I don't mind because I want to go pick a pumpkin. Same with the Christmas tree, but you're right; the tulips don't do much for me. I like a pumpkin yeah, I mean, you're patch. Right. And it is beautiful. Like a, Show me the picture, yeah. but why do I physically? My, my, need my to favorite go there? pumpkin patch is that big box outside of Safeway. Yeah, that's big me, one up. I don't have to get all muddy. My car looks fine when I'm back. You know, I don't have to act like I like cider. Uh, what else here? Uh, hitting up an arcade. All right, that sounds like a great date. That's what they do in Illinois. That's their most popular thing. Okay. And in Idaho and in uh, Oregon, doesn't sound like a bad night either. Axe throwing. Going to an axe throwing. Wood. All right. I feel like that's every night in those states. Yep. Uh, Colorado, looking to just grab pizza and hang out. And West Virginians, they want to go see a comedy show. All right. They're so laughing. Those are the, Look at uh, you. Those are the uniquely popular. And it's a comedy Valentine, show. You don't have to uh, talk to it. Yes. <laughs> shh, shh, 
baby. Shh, yeah. He's telling a joke. Our question, past or present, what thing about your significant other drove you crazy? 206-803-ROCK. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. For the past 20 years, you've enjoyed the refreshing tropical lime flavor of Mountain Dew Baja Blast. So in celebration of this milestone, we're bringing Baja Blast in stores nationwide. And for a limited time with every purchase of Baja Blast, you can collect coins for a chance to get Baja gear or a Taco Bell deal. 2024 is the year of Baja Blast. In stores now. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents 18 plus. Subject to official rules at BajaBlast.com and 61524. Void where prohibited. You've probably heard about generative artificial intelligence, but are you vigilant to its exploitability? Generative AI is shaping society and transforming our daily lives. While we want to embrace the potential, we must also set the standards for responsible use and safeguard the future of our digital world. Hacker One employs over 750 active ethical hackers that specialize in prompt hacking and other AI security and testing. The creative approach taken by a diverse pool of ethical hackers is the best way to discover vulnerabilities. When launching new AI deployments, let Hacker One's AI Red Teaming address the novel challenges of AI safety and security for your business. AI innovation can only be effective if models are tested for safety and security issues that could cause harm. Make sure your AI models and deployments can't be tricked into providing information beyond their intended use and that security flaws can't be exploited to access confidential data or systems with HackerOne. Learn more about our AI red teaming today at HackerOne.com slash AI. Coastal Farm and Ranch with just what the country needs. Join us for Chick Days and Save. This week only, buy three chicks, get one free, and save $10 off a Double Tough Poultry Starter Kit. Swing by for super spring savings on tools, mowers, soils, mulches, seeds, and more. Coastal Farm and Ranch, we just what the country needs. Get more spring essentials for less, now through March 19th. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Past or present, what thing about your significant other drive or drove you crazy? 206-803-ROCK. Uh, I got a couple of texts here. It says, I hate when I'm trying to vent, and instead of emotional support, I get a logical solution to my problems. Because there's, if you're venting, right, you just want support. If you actually ask for advice, then give the advice. Trust me, we've all learned that the hard way over the years. Like, I was going to say, that's a common thing in every male-female relationship. Because you, you think you're helping and then realize, okay, you don't actually want my help. I'm just your sounding board. Cool. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Uh, let's see. Something I can't stand is being told by my wife that we can't afford anything extra, but then have like four to eight Amazon packages delivered in the same week. <laughs> Someone else trying to think how to delicately put this. Uh, when they're having sex, she is awfully wet and basically says you have to shop back the bed every time you have sex so it's not soaking wet. We got waterproof blankets. It does not work. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Family Fun Center has been closed for years. My bad. No more go-karts there. I asked my wife if she wanted to go to the Tulip Festival. She got mad and said, that S is for old ladies. Someone else. Currently, my wife drives me crazy by leaving the lights on all over the house. Now, we have low energy bulbs and solar panels, so it's not the cause that drives me nuts. It's the fact that I'm the only one tall enough to change the goddamn things when they burn out. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, my ex-wife was in her 20s and would still hold her hands up in the L shape in front of her to tell left from right. Drove me crazy. And then one more about the Tulip Festival says, hey, I live in Mount Vernon. Tulip season is the absolute worst. Thanks to the influx of people coming up on a two-lane highway, all getting off of my exit, and on average between 50, adding an extra that 15 sucks. to 30 yeah, minutes to my commute, and they add, they're just effing flowers. And it's, stay not, home. It's, and it's not like a weekend either. It, it goes on for weeks. Yeah, it's a, it's a so, long you know, like I mean, look, they do stuff in Fremont all the time. It might disrupt my uh, mojo for about a you know a weekend trying to get in and out, but that's not the worst thing in the world. But I mean, I, that festival, man, it's and two, three weeks long. About that. Yeah, absolutely. Our question, past or present, what thing about your significant other drove you crazy? 206-803-ROCK. Good news. I would think that Tulip Festival's coming up. 
Oh, oh joy. April. 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 You got time. It is coming up. Cool. I got to start doing my tulip research. Well, I'll just say in advance, no, I don't want to go. Well, yeah, but I want to be able to point them all out to the girl I'm taking. That's a yellow tulip. <laughs> that That's one's purple. I mean, right. Well, you had a colorblind girlfriend. <laughs> Hello, Devin. Welcome to the venture. That's why she's not impressed. Hola. 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 How y'all doing today? We're doing great, Devin. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to you. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you got my card. <laughs> so uh, the thing that drives me crazy about my current girlfriend is that... Uh, she stresses out a great deal about the cleanliness of her room and the ability to maintain that and the lack of space involved, but she refuses any help in managing it. So she'll want to vent incessantly, but not seek a solution for it. And I'm happy to listen, but there are, <laughs> are you, are you happy to listen? No, no. So what is, what is, what is the problem? You don't have enough room. Uh, she just doesn't have enough room uh, for a great deal of stuff. Um, her roommate has a, a majority of the space already. For I that. see. Okay, so. so there's not much you can do about that. No, and we don't live together, so it's, so you just get to listen it. to it. Has mm -hmm. she been hinting that maybe that? you two should move in together, or anything like that? Uh, there are conversations around it. It's just uh, uh, unfeasible uh, yeah. at the moment. For do you like uh, Do you like the closet in your bedroom? Because the answer is no. Because that's not yours. Yeah. Just, just no. It, it's no. I mean, if you like where you put right. your clothes, then I would not recommend that. <laughs> right. Unless you want to get dressed like in yeah. the hallway, yeah. then no. <laughs> because no. obviously she needs a place for all of her things. Or if you like space on the vanity in your bathroom. You so you, you can't be the convenient <laughs> solution to that. Right. No. How long has she been with this roommate? Uh, She's been since uh, COVID, so... Right. About four years. Okay. Well, they, 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 yeah. other than that, the the, the small things, they, they, they're pretty copacetic as far as being roommates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, okay. they're All great. Right. They just they just struggle with uh, with communicating, advocating for each other's needs. Okay, right. Right. Are, are you, yeah, you're putting this so nice. I know you should be like wow. a trial attorney, man. Because <laughs> yeah. like we right. get what you're saying, but you're very delicate uh, how you say it. So, what would she say about you drives her crazy? Uh, well, you already brought it up earlier, uh, the, uh, uh, providing logical solutions when all they want to do is vent. Sometimes it's the way you talk, the, uh, man. It's on, like on Ted said. You, you sound yeah, like well. a truck. So you would be the worst guy, I would think, to vent to just emotionally. Because like you said, you're, you're very stoic. You're very poignant in how you point things out. And that's the last thing people want to hear when they're venting. Mm -hmm. Look, and, and you're also <laughs> wired, you're, everyone's wired differently. But typically from the sexes, from what I've experienced in my life, you know, we try to problem solve. We try to make things easier, and we try to correct the problem and the solution so that the person that we are with and we love won't be upset, and it's not something that's bothering them and but stressing that's, them. But that's, that's not how you should think but about that it. That is not what they want. What they want is basically what you said. They just want to be able to vent their frustrations. They don't want a solution. They right. just want you to have an ear and have a sympathetic ear. So even if you said, well, that doesn't make sense, that's the wrong thing to say. What you need to say is, like, I hear where you're coming from. That would frustrate me as well. Maybe you two could uh, have a, a talk and see if you can come to a compromise or whatever the thing is to try to. What general response to those kinds of things? Like, we both know the person you're talking about is a bitch. Like, stop yeah. talking. Like, mm -hmm. She's been a bitch. You, d you didn't like her five years she's ago. She's not changing. You don't like her now. And every time you yep. bring her up, it's generally the same kind of thing. Like, she's a bitch. So a Still couple of times, look, it's not great. It's, it, it, like, we all do it. There are certain things where it's like, I, it's, you know, sometimes you're just going to go, all right, well, nothing's going to change currently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whether we can keep bitching about it or not, but also sometimes, too, like I say all the time, I have a very good friend who's a trial attorney, mm -hmm. but I will say to him, I am just venting. <laughs> right. It, right. And I yeah. feel like in relationships, that's a, for some reason, that line never gets thrown out there my wife and i are pretty good about saying it now like, we've been together for 20 years so it's not like we started that way but we're at a point now where it's like hey i'm just gonna scream my face off for a minute you know you can keep cooking yeah. you can watch mm -hmm. tv even i just need you physically present so when i'm yelling yeah. i can at least pretend to... and she's like cool and, and then she'll do yeah. the same thing like hey i just want to get this off my chest my first question is it about me no cool yeah all right mm -hmm. man you know vent away and that's when i just get because she's a bitch she's always been a bitch way to like her I don't know that this is life or death. These are just some comments that people make about things that drive uh, them crazy about their significant other. Uh, here's one. Where do you want to go for dinner? 
Ah, I don't care. Okay. BS. How about Italian? Nah. Uh, not, not in the mood. Uh, steak? Nah. Okay. So you do know what you want, but you're going to make me guess. Also, dear, using the word but as an adjective only works in limited applications, such as but ugly. You are not all the time but tired, but hungry, or but happy. There's so another. She uses but, but for all the time. I'm but tired. The food one is unreal. What's that? Just the oh, whatever. Man. Like, I've told this story before, and we're driving through Port Angeles or whatever. But we're, like, coming back from a trip. Yeah. Right? So it's been a fun couple days or whatever. But, like, whatever. What do you want? For, like, she's dry. What do you want for lunch? I don't care. How about this? That's fine. How, right? That's fine. That's fine. And by the third place we just cruise by, I just find my, you know, and I'm generally pretty calm. I said, just pick an effing place. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> then somehow it turned into half an hour of I blew up at her and this and that. I'm like, you you kept asking. I said, I like, when I say I don't care, I mean it. That is what we mean. Yep, but yep. as we sped by each restaurant or fast food joint, and then we ended up at Taco Bell, when we left the cabin, <laughs> I said, I feel like trying this new item at Taco Bell. Okay. <laughs> Here's another. <laughs> he puts garbage in the sink. The garbage is under the sink. You are already <laughs> in the sink area. Is it that much effort to open the damn door and put the garbage in the trash? And I like this one. She thinks she knows everyone walking down the street to a restaurant. Is that Nick McLass's name? I think it is. Wait. Oh, no, it's not. At the restaurant. Oh, my God, I think that's Lauren McLaneface. I haven't seen her forever. Waitress serves us. She seems familiar. You don't know everyone. Shut the hell up. <laughs> and one more. Wow. I've never run into that Words one. you yeah, can I never say. I've never heard that one. Uh, <laughs> she will, she will take a shower, then sit in her towel for like over an hour, and then complain that she's out of time to get ready. Our question, yeah. past or present, one thing about your significant other drove you crazy. 206-803-ROCK. What about this one? I'm cold. Put on some socks. Yeah, get a blanket. Right, like put on a hoodie. We're in our home. Right. <laughs> the closet is down the hall, man. And in the end, you're going to wear my hoodie. That's one thing that gets me, all right? So, like... We get a lot of hoodies through work, and most of them are pretty cool. And I got them at home, and I remember getting a call from my wife. We're here. We're not on the area. I'm like, hey, where's your uh, the Black Label Society hoodie? I said, I'm wearing it. I mean, it's mine. She's like, oh. I said, well, why do you need it, man? She's like, well, I was going to take the dog out. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, you're asking me where my hoodie is. It is on my body. I know you like to wear it when I'm not home, but I brought it with me today because this is the hoodie I want to wear. That's one. Two, why <laughs> is it that you only put on my stuff when you're doing something like I'm going to pick up poop or I'm going to mow the lawn or I'm going to paint something in the house? Like, Why do my clothes become like your junk clothes? Because mm -hmm. to me, they're, they're just my clothes, man. But doesn't stop her. Doesn't stop her. I'm telling you. Hello, church. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So... My ex girlfriend would we'd get our we'd go to a hotel and she the moment we get there it could be freezing outside out outside she will turn the thermostat all the way down to about forty degrees and then put on all of like a blanket and a sweatshirt. Now I like the pool, so I'll go swimming in the pool and I'll come back and it will be like a frozen tundra. And she'll look at me going, "Why are you shivering?" I'm like, hey, "It's cold." <laughs> Oh, we'll put on a sweatshirt. Now, did you guys live together at all? We did. We lived together for seven years. Did she turn down she the heat at every home? Time. Really? What, uh, she wouldn't do it at home. No, no. She wouldn't have service down at home. At home, it would be, Philadelphia was, was nice and a balmy, you know, 70, 80 degrees, you know, nice and comfortable. But go to a hotel? Nope. Have to be... Okay. Minimum 40. Did so, you first of all, her? sir, 80 degrees is not a comfortable temperature. Not indoors. No. Not yeah, indoors. No, no heat. I, I'd, I'd rather have it too cold than too hot. I really would. Like, for some reason, when a place is way too hot, I get nauseous. I'm like, I got to step outside. Like, I just don't. Even well, I mean, look, I'm on his, his was it his ex? Yes. Yeah. I, I'm the same way. Because it's a hotel room. A, it has air conditioning. B, you don't have to pay for it. Right. So, like, I crank that thing down as low as it go. Like, my room really? is like the frozen tundra. I just try to go I, I, seven. I, I, I'm six, just sixty-seven. Like, I'm at sixty-seven. Really? Yes. Oh, I'll take. I'll take it down. I'm just like her. I was like, oh, she sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Exactly. If you still have her number, let Ted know. Maybe That's be right. perfect together on vacation, man. Yeah. <laughs> just on vacation. Sadly, right. she's no longer with us. Oh, oh my geez. god. 
Oh, no wonder ah, you broke Jesus. up. Jesus. Man, can, then can you say my late girlfriend? Because yeah. ex, I'm like, oh, he broke up with her. Ha, ha, ha. Jesus, man. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. Uh, she passed away four years ago. God rest her soul. But that was the only thing that was irritated about her. Everything else, she was a peach. Wait, were you guys still together when she passed on? Yes, sadly. Uh, she she was uh, she got into basically to where she was eating her feelings, got too big, and said she would lose the weight. And then the day that she agreed to it, they didn't put her on a dia- on a CPAP machine, and she went peacefully in the night. Jesus, man, man, that's crazy. That is terrible. That's crazy. I'm sorry. About it, it's late girlfriend at that point. Not ex. It kept saying ex. So I'm like, yeah, they broke up. He doesn't like her anymore. My bad. Yeah. I'll more comments on things that uh, your significant other does to drive you crazy. It's also what? just, I, it's a very sad story, but it's, I feel like it's the opposite. What do you mean? I feel like whenever I'm dating a girl, I go to her house, I'm like, can you please turn that thermostat down? It's oh, right. like Miles is saying, mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to be able to sleep. You're going to be miserable. We're yeah. all going to hate this. <laughs> My wife leaves stuff in the microwave way after it's done. It just sits there, beeping, twice a minute. Until she goes and gets it. This will go on for 10, 15 minutes or so until I get so frustrated that I get up and get whatever the hell is in there and take it out myself. Really? That's just weird to me. I mean, What's the whole the thing point about of microwaving it? it? Right. Like, mm-hmm. just put it in a conventional oven if you're willing to wait 15 or 20 minutes. Right? I mean, it, the yeah. point of the microwave is I need to eat yeah. in 90 seconds. Yeah. Right. And whoever's uh, blowing up the microwave in our office, man, you better get on that quick, man, because you're going to get an ass kicking. I saw the email, and once I saw it was about the microwave, I, I dipped down. Well, I don't use the microwave. Yeah, so I don't I either. Like I knew it wasn't me, but I'm just like, all right, whoever you are, you're going to get your ass kicked. you got a hot email. You know what I mean? Uh, here's another. It was a hot email. My significant other will never put anything back where it belongs. I try to keep a flashlight in the drawer, maybe in the kitchen, so I know where it is if the power goes out or anything. It's never in there when I need it and the power goes out. I keep a nail clipper in the cabinet of the bathroom so I can find it when I need to clip my nails. Who knows where it is now? The worst is when I then ask where something is, and my significant other will say, oh, hang on, I think I know where it is, <laughs> Right. then spends 10 minutes frantically looking for it. If you just put it back where you found it, it would never be an issue. I feel like that's the question. Not with my wife so much, but with the kids. Like, guys, listen, man, put it, and look, my father beat it into my head, I beat it in my kid's head, like... You use something of mine, and I am okay with that. The problem is, I don't know where it is, and you don't know where it is, but you were the last person to use it. Mm -hmm. Daughter, specifically. Yep. Sounds pretty good about it. My daughter, I'm like, man, if she uses something, just consider it lost. Can I borrow your so-and-so? Sure, and you might as well just throw it over the fence in the neighbor's yard, because we both know I'll never see it again. I will, uh, this one just drove me absolutely insane. I could be sitting next to her on the couch. For a half an hour. Uh, maybe we're watching a show, whatever we're doing, maybe snacking, who knows, whatever the deal is. I start walking upstairs. I get to the farthest point in the place from where she is located. And that is for the first time in a half an hour when she is going to decide to start having a conversation right, with Right, once me. you get up and leave. I am so far, I am outside. I am taking the trash out. This is when the conversations start. What? I can't hear you. Hold on a minute. Right. What, what are you doing? Where are you? I'm taking the trash out. What? What's going on? <laughs> right. This one says something. I, 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 mean, I, was like, yeah, I have done it before, but anymore, like, I just won't answer. I'm just going to walk outside yeah, and take out yeah. the trash. <laughs> right. I mean, I don't care yeah. if it's somebody right. I'm dating, if it's a kid in the house, if it's my mother in the house. Right. You got to wait. Or just wait a minute. If I say anything, it'll be come out here and ask me. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's exactly. why, why are you yelling? Why don't you walk into this room and speak to me? And here's a similar one. Ask me where I'm going as soon as I move an inch. I'm going to pee. Thanks for asking. Where the hell else am I going? In my pajamas at 1145 at night. As I walk into the bathroom. What are you doing? Well, one of two things, maybe both. Mm-hmm. I'll let you. My grandfather used to, uh, he, he'd been madly in love with my, with, with my grandmother, but he just had a lot of patience. And he would get so pissed off about that because he could not move an inch. And he, he, he would just come outside and sit on the porch and go outside, Granddad, what's going on? Oh, just getting some air. <laughs> <laughs> wait, well, wait, there's air inside, Granddad. Why, why, well, here's a problem. 
can't do anything. Can't can't do. She watches me like a hawk. <laughs> what are you doing over there? What are you looking for in the drawer? Why are you going through that closet? You know what I want? I want a room with nothing in it, <laughs> just a chair. A that way, when I go in there, and she says, "What are you doing?" I can just say, "I'm sitting in my chair in my empty room <laughs> with none of your clutter, and I ain't looking for nothing." <laughs> <laughs> That's his goal. Right. The man cave. Right. There's nothing in there I, but a chair. I chick. want an empty room with nothing, nothing in it. Just one chair I can go sit down in and just relax for a minute. Is that is that wrong? <laughs> Am I a bad person? Yeah. And then he would calm down and, you know, get the coke out of the trunk and bring a six pack in and she'd be fine. But <laughs> Yeah. Uh, some random girl that was in my class three years ago liked something I posted on Facebook. All right. All right? Obviously, we're effing. Oh, no. <laughs> According to my girlfriend. Yep, right. <laughs> Asking for a bite of my one scoop ice cream cone. One scoop. You could have gotten an ice cream cone right. for yourself. Uh, I mean, come on. That's already half the cone if you take one bite. <laughs> Something that used to drive this guy crazy. And he mentions French fries. <laughs> uh, here's one. He takes a dump without closing the door or turning on the exhaust. Ooh. Turn on the fan, dude. Come on, man. I used to have a roommate that uh, used the bathroom with the door open. He, he, no, no, Two of them at the same time. But he turned, like, right. We did not have an exhaust fan in there. I'm just saying, for this guy, we had a turn, the, turn the fan on or yeah. something. We had a Please. window. Was so leave with the door open. If you're having sex with somebody, I could fathom it. But turn on the damn fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's one you can relate to, Steve. My husband leaves the kitchen cabinet doors open all the time. He never opens one and closes it. I've actually thought about taking all of the cabinet doors off and seeing if he would even notice that they are not there anymore. Yeah, my wife. I call her the poltergeist because when I get, up, she always gets up before me. When I walk into the kitchen, it's like we had a ghost that opened all the kitchen cabinets. So I'm like, is there something you can't find? And here's the thing: we redid the kitchen last year. And one of the things we did, and I thought this was a great idea, just the soft touch, uh, soft push close. Yeah. And I'm like, we're doing this for you, right? So I'm mean, if you just, oh, I see, you just tap it in a close. Tap it. It'll close. Breathe cool. on it heavy. It'll close. They're still open. They are still open. I'm like, my. God, man. Like, mm -hmm. we got this thing so that the fr I've given up on you doing it. I understand that's not going to happen, so we put the money into the kitchen so that they could kind of do it on their own. You just have to tap it. You still won't do it. At this point, I think she just does it on purpose. Like, just gets up, opens up all the cabinets and says, yeah, I'm I kind of want to come over and just touch them close. Dude, seriously, that's all you got to do. Boop. That's all you got to do. Our question, past or present, what thing about your significant other drives or drove you crazy? With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? 
Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network. So whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Our question, past or present, what thing about your significant other drives you crazy? 206-803-ROCK. Uh, some comments from the text line. It says, something I really hate is when my wife asks me to do something, and if it's not a response in the exact tone that she wants me to say, she says, don't give me attitude. And then I say, I'm not giving attitude. It just makes the whole thing worse. It's the lose-lose situation thing. Yep. See, uh, someone says, my wife does that with the kitchen cabinets, but she doesn't notice that she does not close them because she's short. Meanwhile, my tall ass hits my head. I've done that. This is the weird one. It says, Ola, I had a boyfriend who sounded like an elephant when he was done having sex. I couldn't date him because I'd start laughing. He had no idea. Afterward? I, I don't understand it. Uh, every time my boyfriend would fart, he would try to subconsciously kiss me right after. I confronted him about it. He didn't have an answer why he did it. That is a strange one. Uh, let's see. Not what about lie. just okay? What do you mean? Like, you'll get that text... Sometimes they're happy, sometimes they're just saying okay, sometimes they're pissed. But every time I've sent just okay, it's like, what's your problem? Really? I mean, yeah. It's K, like the complete, K is the worst. It's the complete opposite. I'm like, I just said okay. You uh, said I'm, okay. I'm good with the okay. And my wife knows, like, I'm literally just responding. Cause she likes to update me on things, whether it's important to me or not, doesn't matter. And if I just say okay, she just knows I'm listening. I think right? thumbs up is the best way to do it. Because then you're I saying, right, like, just acknowledge it, right? Yeah. yeah and that, and yeah, sometimes yeah. with okay, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just saying, okay. Right. Uh, to me, that's what okay means. Like, you, you've made a statement. I am letting you know that I've heard what you said, but I don't have much opinion about yeah, it. Yeah, but if I say, hey, uh, maybe thinking about, uh, for whatever reason, picking up Thai food on the way home, then you get a just a K. It's like, that's not okay. Okay, because then I'm like, uh, you really don't want Thai food, and that's okay with me, too. What do you want? Yeah, because I feel like K is different than okay. Okay means, okay, K is kind of like K. Yeah, I've like, just been in the position where okay can mean okay, and okay, you could tell something's wrong. Okay right. can mean, a, it's like the, the S-bomb, right? right? You can be cool as, you can be ugly as, you, can, you know what I mean? Like, or that's it could what taste it, like. Yeah. Yeah. It, it could or, taste like, or this is the, right? It mm -hmm. just, but, but like okay with no context, you're like, man. And yeah. been thinking, but with a text, it's worse, because I'm like, if I respond and ask this question, this is going, and there's nothing wrong, Well, then it's going to become, like well, what's wrong with you? Why do you think there's something wrong? Like, I, I don't know. If I you said, I was going to pick up Thai food on the way home tonight for dinner, and I wrote back, cool, uh, give me swimming rama with chicken, then there's an answer. There. Is that what you'd get? Uh, well, mostly duck. Ah, okay. Yeah. Just curious to know your order. You seemed okay with it. That's why I like to do the double like, horns. That's usually I, I would, I this is what I want. See, Miles, I would have texted you back, swimming ramen. Like, what the F is that, honey? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going Thai food. <laughs> yeah. It's a pud Thai. It's a pud Sae. Well, I mean, you know, get one, new, just, get one, new, get one, get, get, get one rice dish. You know, that's what typically what I do. Yeah, give me something. Yeah. And then one more from the text line. This is, I have never been in this situation, but I can see why it would drive you crazy. It says, my ex loved astrology. Everything was blamed on either a star, a moon, or your sign. I'd be in a grumpy mood, and she would say, well, of course you are. You're a Virgo, and the moon is 22% full tonight, so that makes sense. She would say hi to someone at a bar and hit it off because they were both cool people. And she would say, I bet you're a Leo just like me. That's why I was attracted to you. Wrong! Ha ha! As happens, it doesn't have to be because of the month you were born. <laughs> yeah. Pastor President, one thing about your significant other drove you crazy. 206-803-ROD. Yeah. That would drive me nuts. There was a comedian that did that. He went up on stage and he basically was talking about, you know, the, those that really get into signs. Yeah. He said, I want you to just, for a second there, just try to guess. If, if you think that you can, guess what sign I am. It says, I'm a Virgo. I knew it. I knew it. Ha! I'm a Pisces. Right. I knew it. Ha! I'm a Taurus. <laughs> right. He just kept changing. Like, I get it. <laughs> Hello, Brock. Welcome to the bedroom. Hola, bitches. Hola. Hola. Sorry, I need to get you off the speaker. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, if this is a present girlfriend. Uh, not really a girlfriend because we've been together for seven years. I would call uh, her at this it, point. 
common w- law. Well, that's the wife. whole thing. I've been. It's it's significant other wife. It's not. How wife. would she? Okay, you're going to introduce me to her, but she is standing next to you. So you can either just say, "Hey, this is Sue," or do you say, "This is my girlfriend." This is my common law. What do you call her? This is what we've been discussing actually throughout recently. Is what do we call her now? I'm not. I've already been married twice. I don't want to get married a third time. That's fair. Uh, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her, so it shouldn't matter. But but you got to yeah, come up with the title, bro. Look, hey, what's wrong with girlfriend? Okay, sig- significant other. There's yeah. nothing yeah, wrong with girlfriend. But I'm, I think what you're saying is, after seven years, she wants you to call her something better than girlfriend. Well, no, it just, it's just awkward at points. It's like people think she's my wife, and it's like, okay, well, she is my wife, but she's not my wife. But, you know, it's just, it's awkward. But so after Just say three, this is my old lady. This I, is my I, old lady. Just, just stick with girlfriend. Uh, she is your girlfriend. Should be an yeah, issue. Oh, my how girlfriend. about this? That's what I call her now. It's my girlfriend. This That's is my fiance that I'll never marry. <laughs> right. but you didn't I, say- no, I didn't say never. I mean, look, maybe when I'm 70, I'm 55 now. I might change my mind, but... If she can just hold on 15 more yes, years. Maybe well, you didn't set it up great. You said current girlfriend, but I guess it's not that. We've been together for seven years. Like, all right, still your girlfriend. Well, yeah, we're moving into a house together. So we, we live together now, but we bought a house and moving in. And this is part of the story is she has too much stuff. She's not a hoarder, but I grew up like a rich kid. And then she grew up like a poor person. And so she won't throw toothpaste out or something until it's totally gone to where it's like, Oh my God! Can we just get rid of this? I have too much of this chemicals, or you know, just everything. And like, what else besides the toothpaste? Oh, like chemicals. Like, I go into the garage, and there's like, why do we need like five Lysol cans? And ah, okay, you know, stuff like that. And well, she probably bought it on sale, you know, or went to Costco. I was going to say, did she go to Costco? Yes, and we do a lot of Costco shopping too, but. But it's at some point, it's like, okay, it's like uh, the bottom of the thing. Can we just throw it away? We already have four well, more. Let's I, just, look, <laughs> I would highly recommend before you move into the place you bought, uh, take a trip to Goodwill. Get rid of as much clothing as you can. Mm-hmm. Instead of yeah, packing yeah. things that you're going to throw away, throw those things or donate them before you pack them up. And then when you go in there, if you need something, you can buy it. That's what I I'm mean, trying keep, to do. Keep, and I, keep the basics, but I mean, if something is just like, do you use this wicker basket that's stacked you were up saying with this. another wicker he basket? He knows this, but yeah. that's the problem. I had it. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be hard too. Like if that's just the way she grew up. I would like up. to throw everything away and get just new stuff. To be honest with you. And by the way, uh, some texters <laughs> gave you some advice here. They say uh, you can go with life partner, and someone says if the guy's smart, you'll say my better half. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, there you go. Better yeah. half. I don't. Uh, this top, bitch. Top, oh, I had a top, <laughs> top cabinet in the kitchen that was a little bit taller than the other cabinets. Yeah. That thing was full of vases from flower arrangements for whatever reason. Right, like, like, even the, even this, the, the, the cheapest ones in the world. There was, there was, seriously, there was like nine or ten vases from different bouquets, from birthdays to Valentine's Days to just gifts that people gave. Goodwill. Yeah, they're all in there. And I'm just like... We never have maybe one bouquet of flowers out in the summer at a time. Like, why do we need nine of these things? Well, that's a shorter one. That's a bigger one for this. It's like, like oh, my God. But if you put flowers oh in it, God. I would not argue. Like, if, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you actually use the vases yeah. and we always had fresh flowers, like, fine. But if they're sitting in the kitchen, does it matter if it's right. big or small if you yeah. don't use them? Like, I don't care what kind of car you have if it doesn't work. So at one point in time, I, it, we did fill the dishwasher up. And I was like, you know what? It's running. I'm just going to get one of these vases and pour like three beers in it. Yeah. And so I pour like three beers in this vase and just put it on the counter, drink it, make it uh, dinner. And she's like, what, what are you doing with that? I'm like, I'm using it. I put this away. I am using this thing. If it, she, so how many, you made a beer tower. Like, how many beers are in there? I was like, three. Because <laughs> yeah. that's, what, that's what took to fill it up. So just sat there and sipped that's on That's thinking though, man. Sipped on my beer. Just like, and then she started throwing them away. Really? Because it was three of the same That's ones. when she started throwing it away. Yes. Just I don't like, had three beers at just once. Just like, all right. <laughs> yeah. I think she recognized the ridiculousness of the situation. Yeah. Like, I'm using one of these nine. Past or present, one thing about your significant other drove you crazy. 206-803. I do like the idea of somebody bringing over a bouquet of flowers. She's like, we don't have a vase. I don't, I don't have a vase. But I feel like we have one vase on the off chance that someone brings flowers. Because it's not going to be me. Uh, although my wife did text me yesterday. And it showed a picture of this big bouquet of flowers. And she goes, this is what you got me for Valentine's Day. I said, I am too nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, also That's what we do. She just buy it. I'm like, hey, you're welcome. Cool. Let me throw this out there. I don't own a vase. Shocking, I know.
But <laughs> say you bought flowers and you take them to somebody the next day, you could use a mason jar. It'll hold up. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. I, I have done it countless times. Some more complaints about significant others. My wife pulls the, I don't have anything that fits, so I need to go buy whatever piece of clothing here that you need. Mm-hmm. She does this every time. We have any type of social engagement. So she ends up buying like $400 worth of clothing, only to wear one outfit and does not return the unused stuff. One more. She says we need to start saving money and should not eat out as often. But she buys the kids drive through like four times a week because it's easier than cooking at home. Uh, here's another. Basically, she has ADD and refuses to admit it. So when I want to sit down and watch a movie without her, this is what happens. Movie starts, and she hears the movie start. Hey, what are you doing? Me? I'm going to watch this uh, Loch Ness Monster movie. Her. Without me? Can I wait for five minutes while I shower? Oh, God. I'll sure. 30 minutes later, she comes out of the bathroom. All right, we'll start the movie. Hold on. I need to get some snacks. Mm-hmm. Just a minute. Ten minutes later, finally sits down with a drink and popcorn. I start the movie. She finishes the popcorn and drink in five minutes. Gets up, goes into the bathroom or the bedroom, never comes back to watch the movie with me. Every time, I die a little on the inside. <laughs> I've given up trying to watch movies with my wife. What? Why? What's she the, just she can't sit there long enough to to watch it. It's a lot to take on. It's one of the things that we talk about. Like I'm not ready to sit down for a two and a half hour movie. Now she will watch four or five episodes of whatever show that she's right. trying to binge through right now. Which she does. She doesn't do it a whole lot. Like to, to her to her credit, she doesn't do a whole lot of just sitting down for long periods of time. But she still has some interest in some of these movies. She's just never going to watch them. You can't but watch. You, but can't, but you can't watch, watch it without, without her. her. Exactly. Hey, you want to watch this movie? No, I don't feel like watching a movie right now. I don't have the attention. Oh, you know what's going to piss me off? Months down the line, well, I'll finally I put it. I want to see this movie. Why are you movie? watching yeah. that? I wanted to watch. I specifically right, okay. said that All one, right. but we're not going to watch Mike, it. Mike, Mike, yeah. Mike. We've we, definitely <laughs> been there okay. before. So obviously, I have shows that I'm interested in. Of course, uh, she'll have shows that she's interested yeah. in, and then we have shows we watch together. Together, correct. All right. Out of a couple of those shows we watch together. And we make it a point to sit down and watch them together. Right. I cannot tell you how many times I can count them on my hands at the time where we're sitting down. The show is about 15 minutes in. Mm-hmm. I get up because I'm going to go use the bathroom. Take me 30 seconds to get in there and wash my hands. <laughs> what does she say to me? Oh, don't leave now. You're not going to want to miss this. And I'm like, big what? Why what do, do you, you know that? What do you mean I'm not going to want to miss this? Um, no th- there's a part coming way. up. Wait, just hold on. Just hold on. Then go to the bathroom. You, it's you important. Serious? And I'm like, you've seen this. What the hell? Oh, and then, and then, okay. Did you watch? Did you watch the fourth episode too? <laughs> We're on three. Well, I mean, maybe. Uh, when in the hell did you watch that? Well, Saturday morning before you got. What? Tell me the deal. Like you right, have your right. shows. I have my shows. We have our shows together. Like, oh, like TV cheating or something like that. Like, yeah. some term what for the f is that? I could have watched it on my own time That's what too. I'm saying. I like watching I know. it with you. I, you fell asleep on the couch. I was still up. <laughs> I could have kept watching this damn right. show. Oh, hold on. You're not going to want to miss this part. It's important to the plot. How the hell do you know that? <laughs> The only show that we strictly watched together, and we got to do it at the same time, Game of Thrones. And it had run its course, so we're just binging through it as, as however we wanted to watch it. And we'd sit down and watch it together. No problem. Great time. But she always falls asleep before me. It's just She always gets up before me, falls asleep before me. That's how we operate. And the problem is, you know, it's an hour-long episode. 45 minutes in, she starts nodding off. Hey, can you pause it? I think I'm going to fall asleep. Like, baby... There's 15 minutes left in an hour episode. You know what that means? All of the stuff we're waiting to see is about to happen. Mm-hmm. All of the fight, all of the, <laughs> like, they've spent 45 minutes leading to this moment and you're nodding off now. And then I got to wait and it would kill me. So every time we'd watch a new episode, we'd you have, have to go back to the other 15 one. minutes left in the previous one, get through 45 minutes of the next one. That drives me. And, and then the other thing is knowing that she falls asleep before me. She always falls asleep on the couch. Will not get up and just go to bed. She just won't do it. That's my mom. That is my mother. Don't care. So she spreads out on the sofa. The dog jumps up there. It's a nice, cozy moment. I don't mind. But she'll wake up for a second, and it's always the same conversation. Oh, my God, Stephen, can you please turn down the TV? I go, "Uh Mm uh-huh. I turn the TV down, and she'll wake up 45 minutes later. Oh, my God, can you please turn the TV down? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I can turn it down. And this goes through the course of the night. And I've tried to explain to her, but the problem is, you know, when people wake up for half a second, they're not going to remember anything you tell them. Correct. 
So it's like the reason the TV is so loud every time you wake up is because your snoring ass is right next to me. <laughs> yeah. And honest to God, I can't. So I turn it up over your snoring. The problem when you wake up, yes, the TV seems loud, and when you're not snoring, it strikes me as being loud. But mm-hmm. when you're snoring and you will not physically go to bed, I have to turn yeah. it up to hear. Mm-hmm. Meantime, if you're awake and I'm watching a show she's not interested in, I will try to tune out all of the TikTok videos I hear you scrolling through. And I have to turn up the TV again. But right. then she'll pass right back out after she and does pass, it right down, right? Every, dude, every time. And, and here's something that drives me crazy about her. I just wish I had this this superpower. She will look at you and say, I'm going to go to sleep. I was like, okay. <laughs> if she says she's going to sleep, I mean, it's like she just says it and she is asleep. Wow. Very, my, mom, my, mom will say, my mom will say, I'm not asleep. I'm resting my eyes. And I'll say, Mommy, don't people call resting your eyes? They call it sleep. Will you please get your ass off the couch and go to bed? It is 1145. You're not going to get up and do anything. It's a reasonable time. You're not missing anything. Right. Yeah. We're watching late night, you know, talk shows. Mm Mm-hmm. You're obviously snoring. You've got your mouth, you know, hanging wide open. I should start dropping like peanuts in her mouth. Like, are you resting your jaw as well? I I know. It drives me wild with anybody. Like, just right. And it's just, I don't know. That's just one of my giant pet peeves. Right. It's just like, look, I get it. Saturday afternoon, you're by yourself. I'm going to take a nap on the couch. Take a nap on the couch. No problem. But right, when there's other people there or I want to watch something, I, I don't care if it's my mother, if it's a girl, if it's a buddy. I don't even we've been drinking. You pass on the couch. Like, go lay in the bed. Yeah, just go lay yeah. in the bed. It doesn't matter. Or I'll go down to the basement and just watch TV down there. Right? Don't get, oh, what have you done in the basement last night? Like, watching TV at a normal volume. Because you were mm-hmm. still upstairs. You know, like, and I'm, I'm past the fight. You've woken up three times, and every time it's the same thing. So I just went downstairs and watched it down there. <laughs> Honest to God. Like, that way yeah. I can just watch it. I'm also just volume. one of those people. Like, like, I'll sit on my couch almost every night and watch the TV or whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, sometime around midnight, I'll just go. All right, time to lay down. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I might not go to yeah. sleep right away, but I'm just like, I've got to get to the bed because that's where people sleep. Also, I hate the uh, <laughs> I hate the aspect of the TV. I know people are either TV in the bedroom or not. And I've now turned to the guy that is not is anti-TV in the bedroom. And I also don't take my phone in there mm-hmm. or anything like that because I know I'll just get on my phone or my tablet or whatever and, and do all that. But the idea of having to fall asleep with a television on. For some reason, when I'm really just wanting to go to sleep, yeah. the TV drives me crazy. It distracts me. Like, I'm I'm listening, I'm listening. I'm well, never, why didn't you just turn it off? Because, because, like, I'll because watch my, wife at, time, my <laughs> wife at the time could not go to sleep. Oh, without having the white without, noise Without or the whatever. TV on. And it was Frasier. It was always Frasier. Oh, nice. And it got to the point where I hate Frasier. Yeah. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with the show, the people on the show, yeah. the characters. The show is funny. My wife hates I my shows, too. I hate Frasier. Hates my Because shows. it was just one Frasier after the other. Oh, the, the marathon. Oh, yeah. I mean, whatever. One channel, mm-hmm. just Frasier all night. That's TV the in the bedroom, though, like, you heard me on Mike say it. Like, I'm a sleep timer guy. Yeah. But also, like, I don't mind, and women hate this, but just like, like, honey, I do not want to watch that movie. Well, what are you going to watch in the bedroom? And I'll take a camper chair, plop it in my bedroom, and watch. I don't well, know. Anything, anything, anything that's not some bad. college basketball game. stairs. <laughs> yeah, right. Slippery stairs. <laughs> yes, right? It's just like, look, I really don't want to watch this show. I don't want to get into a fight about it. <laughs> right. I'm fine in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching. Okay. I'm watching Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> Past or present? What thing about your significant other drives you crazy? Two zero six eight zero three rock. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. 
Yo, next round is about to start. You ready? Yeah, yeah, just shopping for a car in Carvana. For real? Yeah, Carvana makes it super convenient to shop whenever, wherever. For real? That's a ton of car options. Yep, and these are all within my price range. For really real? You can afford that? Yeah, with Carvana. And boom, just like that, I'm getting it delivered in a couple days. For really, really real? You just bought a car. For real, and you just lost my turn. Visit Carvana.com to shop for thousands of vehicles under $20,000. Top class actions alert in a groundbreaking move for the payment industry, Visa and MasterCard have come together for a historic $5.6 billion settlement. Top class actions is connecting business owners who accepted Visa or MasterCard from January 1st, 2004 to January 25th, 2019 to their share of this $5.6 billion settlement. Claim your share today at topclassactions.com slash Visa. That's topclassactions.com slash Visa. 99.9 KISW. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrill. Coming up, the return of Who Sucks Less right after emails on our question past or present. What thing about your significant other drives you crazy? 206 803 Rock. A couple of quick texts there. says, My wife takes all the toppings off the pizza, eating them one at a time, then the crust, and then bites peanut MMs in half and each eats each half separately, which leads me to want to go home and ask my daughter when she got married. Because that is exactly mm-hmm. what my daughter does. It's yeah. such a weird thing. But the pizza, yes. The M&M's, I can fathom. Really? I don't know why, but if I'm eating peanut M&M's, at least every fourth or fifth one, you got to eat the shell off and then just the peanut. What if it... Right. Okay, how do you feel You don't about, have to. I just do. I don't know why. How do you feel about biting a blueberry in half? My daughter eats a lot of blueberries, but li- you know the size of a blueberry. Yeah. It's still two separate bites. And like I said, the pizza thing. So reading that person's text actually makes me feel better. Like, okay, I can go home and tell my daughter you're not alone or you're married to the guy that sent this text in. But it's mm-hmm. it's a strange thing. And then, uh, <laughs> Miles, here's someone sympathizing with you. You were talking about you hate the show Frasier because your no, wife... No, because there's anything wrong with the show. Right, but I'm it was sure on all the time. Your wife had to go to sleep with it. it says, Miles, my ex was the exact same way, except it was Nick at night and... It was the George Lopez show. I can't tell you how much I hate George Lopez and Nick at Night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's what I like. <laughs> you ever got in trouble for laughing? You mean at a show? Yeah, like same thing, but like uh, she had like a, uh, what do you call it, like efficiency or whatever. Okay. So like you're just kind of in one room, so there's just one bed. So I would sit at the end of the bed and kind of watch shows, right? And the volume's not loud. I can hear you laughing. Like, What's a funny show? Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Well, you can't get mad at laughter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of laughter, I'll be trying to have a conversation with my boyfriend, and he will fart at me and always maintain eye contact the entire time. <laughs> and he holds a straight face. Drives me insane. But normally, I cannot help but laugh. Also, his farts are so loud, he wakes me up with him. I hate his, quote, fart alarm. <laughs> Our question, past or present, one thing about your significant other drives you crazy. 206 803 I did have that awkward conversation with the wife one time. I, and like I said, she always gets up before me. I look, what time did you get up? Usually it's like 5 36. It's like I actually got up before 30 this morning. I'm like, my God, babe, why'd you get up so early? She's like, you would not stop farting in your sleep last night. <laughs> like, my bad. Sorry you're so tired. Sorry. Hello, Blake. Welcome to the men's room. Boo, bitches. Boo. Boo. What's up, Ted? What's going on? Hey, uh, I'm just calling because uh, I had this ex one time, and um, her name was Erin. We never, ever got to sing together. And this was a weird thing because I was a karaoke host for about 13 years in the city. And whatever the reason, I couldn't figure it out. She would sing in the hallways, sing in the shower. But when I came to singing together, she just wouldn't do it. She would not sing with you. With me, specifically. She would sing with other people. <laughs> she would oh, sing by herself. Well, do why, why do you think that is? I mean, you host karaoke, for God's sake. That doesn't make you good. That's true. <laughs> that's that's true. It does not. But uh, she was actually on American Idol, and I, I actually auditioned for American Idol myself. And uh, we were both good singers, but I just couldn't oh, get her well, 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 was that Was that like working out with somebody? Yeah, I mean... You know, it, it's something, when you're a singer, you want to sing with other people that are good singers. Well, sure. And, uh, it just, it baffled me. Uh, we were together for over three, four years, and never, not one time, would she sing with me. What song, if you could, would you pick for you guys to sing one last time, or one first time? 
Oh, uh, probably picture. Uh, by who? Kid Rock. Oh, that's romantic. Okay. Yeah. And known for his great vocals. So what is it like? I'm curious. What is it like auditioning for American Idol? I mean, did you physically get in front of the judges or was it kind of the pre-audition audition? Uh, I didn't make it to the judges. She made it to the Hollywood round. But oh, wow. it's like a it's a cattle call. It's basically you go into a giant arena and they have these under producers and you sing like 20 seconds for them. They either go, yep or nope. And that's pretty much what, it. Uh, what, what, what song did you pick? Uh, I sang I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. All right. I think I know that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that's cool. At least you gave it a shot, man. That, that's that's all you can do. Yeah. Go, cool. go and give it a try. Mm. Pastor President, one thing about your significant <laughs> other drives you crazy. 206-803-ROCK. I'd be like, I'm going to carry over with you. I do not want to sing. I just like that her whole thing is like, oh, no, I'll sing with other people, just not you. Mm. Yeah, maybe. I, there's got to be something, a reason. What do you think it is? Well, he said, you know, if you can sing, you want to sing with other good singers. Do you think she perhaps did not feel that he was a good singer? Or maybe she thought he was too good of a singer. Yeah. I have she some made friends it to the Hollywood looks, round. He didn't. I'm saying. I hear you, but I have some friends that won't sing karaoke with each other because they're both good, but they each think the other one's better. Or maybe it's just really? she sings with somebody she wants to kind of control with the songs. I don't know. It's the only thing I can think of is like working out with somebody. Like if you want to go to the gym at the same time, cool yeah but like i, I don't want to sit on the same machine next to you and chat no. the whole time also no. i like i always like a guy defending his girlfriend at the gym guy like no one's going over and talking no one's in, in her space like no, right. no, no yeah but like every 30 seconds every minute like going over and standing and talking just to make sure that you know that they came in together like buddy i i don't know anybody in here who was going after your nobody cares. nobody was inappropriate no one <laughs> he might just be talking to her in between sets yeah, but I don't wear headphones, so I kind of hear the conversations, <laughs> and it's right. just kind of like, hey, yeah, I mean, where do you got there? Mm. <laughs> How about you? Well, I still got about 35 minutes, so don't ask. <laughs> Pastor President, one thing about your significant other drives you crazy. 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Jim. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Hey, so my wife was a Dr. Phil junkie. Oh, God. And I get up every morning... Or come home from work, and there's Dr. Phil. And it could even be one she'd seen before. And I'm like, honey, even I've seen this one before. Well, it's almost over here. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So finally, <laughs> one day when she wasn't home, I put on the parental control on the Dr. Phil channel. So it did, did it show up in the menu, or did it just disappear? I, I think it still showed up on the menu, but it wouldn't come on. She couldn't get it to come on. So she's like, I don't know what's going on. I can't get Dr. Phil. And I go, gee, honey, I don't know. Maybe they quit, they quit carrying it or something. I, I'm not really sure. So I wasn't a total SH, but I went for about, three weeks and then finally I couldn't take it anymore and I go, honey, I have to tell you, I put on the parental control and she's like, what? She didn't even know what that was. What and would I'm you, like, yeah, yeah. well, what would you say, what would she say uh, drives her crazy that you did? Put parental controls oh, on Dr. Sports. Phil. Mm -hmm. Oh, sports. A sports? Yeah, she's like, why does, why do they always have to yell? You know, and he's going for the touchdown. <laughs> She's like, why do they have to yell? What? I go, I don't know. They're just excited, I guess. I, you know. Well, there's a, hey, look, man, so, just just watch stuff with Joe Buck. Yeah, he'll keep it. Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. Al Michaels. <laughs> yeah, like I, I finally got her to watch playoff sports, football, baseball, basketball, whatever. These are the cream of the crop. Enjoy this. And she... She appreciated it, but the Dr. Phil thing was just the greatest. Yeah, man. I, I never I, got into that. Well, Dr. Dr. Phil? That was just not no. the show. No. Yeah, no. So that comedian, Adam Ray, we've had him on the mm -hmm. show. Before you go, I never heard of him. All right, he, sirs, it rings no bells. <laughs> he's been doing this act down in, uh, down in L.A. where he's Dr. Phil. All right. And he has other comedians come on and stuff, but his Dr. Phil is pretty spot on. It's very funny stuff. Adam Ray. Adam mm -hmm. Ray. Super funny guy. And again, Adam, my bad in Houston. Yeah.
Did we have him in the studio or yeah. on the phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to Google this guy. Mm-hmm. I just want to see what he looks Come like. Come on, Steve. I, honest to God, I was about to say, I don't know who he is. Ted, <laughs> quickly, like, you do. You do. <laughs> uh, Sounds like I'm just going to get it out in front. So Adam Ray. Adam mm-hmm. Ray. Let's see if I recognize this guy. Hang on. Images. I got nothing, man. I don't remember this guy at all. Really? I swear to God. I'm looking at him. Good looking dude. I, yeah, and he's awesome. He's a yeah. Seattle guy. Like he does all that he's stuff. Either, he's like Seward Park or Mercer Island somewhere. Really? Yeah, that's Mar- what I'm saying. Yeah. I ran into him at the hotel after the championship game. With the, yeah. And instead of a DM, like, sorry, man, I was, I was a little messed up when I saw. You. He's like, no worries. <laughs> Past or yeah. present? One thing about your significant other drove you crazy. Two zero six eight zero three rock. His doctor Phil is awesome. And he's been doing those shows. Like I thought about flying down to L.A. just to see him do these shows. Really? Yeah. Okay. And he's coming up here soon too. I'll have to go see him. <laughs> Thrill, how you been? I don't know, man. Uh, hello, Amanda. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. <laughs> so, my husband, he, I don't know what it is. Sometimes I think he has Tourette's maybe or like slight Asperger's syndrome because it'll be completely silent and he'll just yell out of nowhere. And it's like just the most random and disgusting things sometimes that I can't say on the air, but he'll just do it like all the time, every day, no matter what time of the day, he'll get up first thing in the morning and do it before a cup of coffee. Make me spill my coffee. I, it, I don't it, get it. Yeah, is, it is it obviously that something? Is it like Tourette's? I, that's what I said. I was like, you should probably get yourself tested for Tourette's. And he's like, oh, I'm a healthy guy. I've, I've gone to the doctor. There's nothing wrong. And I'm like, do you yell like that when you go to the doctor? Well, maybe. No, you don't, because they would have tested you. <laughs> what about like if you're in you're at a restaurant or a movie theater? Does it still happen? Yes, grocery store, Costco. He loves to do it in Costco because it echoes. So okay, so that's, is that's he, interesting. Is he doing it on purpose or it's just a tick? A purpose, I think. Plus a tick, maybe I don't know, but I mostly I think it's purposely to annoy me. So how long? He's doing it in Costco on purpose because it echoes. Because it echoes. Like, not a tick. How long have you been yeah. with this man? Uh, we've been together for twenty-two years and married for twelve. All right. And has he been screaming and yelling the whole time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually used to be in a heavy metal band, so. Well, does, does yeah. any of his friends <laughs> do any of his friends? Does anyone else say something or notice this about him other than you? Yes, my brother, uh, our roommate, my mom, like uh, everybody's like, do you have Tourette's or like Asperger's? What is wrong with you? What is yeah. it like the first time you introduce him to family and he, you know, screams some expletive? Uh, my mom's like, is he okay? Is he like, is his chief office cracker? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> See, no, I would, I would, know. I would take the, I would take the just the blurt out screaming. Other than my old brother in law who talks at a volume level that is eight times louder than everyone else. Right. You're in a restaurant. Everyone could hear him. And the things that are coming out of his mouth, I don't agree with and really aren't dinner appropriate most of the time. He's and everyone, not an appropriate everyone, individual. Everyone picks up on this from the wait staff to <laughs> right. the tables beside us. And you can see yeah. looks shooting your way. But this is an hour and a half. Right. I'd almost rather him just scream something for five seconds and be done with it. Because then people, okay, there's something wrong. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not, he's an a-hole. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's it's embarrassing. Like, I'm gonna deal with it. How yeah. uh, how long were you dating him before the first time you heard him scream one of these things? Um, a couple months maybe, and then he did that, and I was like, "Are you okay?" Like, he's like, "What?" And I was like, <laughs> "Never mind." <laughs> okay, all right. That is a strange one to live with. That's that. different. Past or present, one thing about your significant other drives you crazy. Two zero six eight zero three rock. Just going to Costco. Like I'm not going in with you, man. Yeah. I'm going to wait in the car because I know what you're going to do. You're going to embarrass me. Just, just don't yell. But I feel like you, he, he's getting away with it because they're married. But, like, yeah, if that was my buddy, I'd be like, seriously, stop. Right, dude, mm-hmm. We're at the bar. you got to stop doing that, man. Yeah. They're going to kick us out. Hello, Jen. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch, hola. 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 <laughs> so my husband has gas. And not just like gas, but <laughs> he he has that kind that staff meetings will be cut short because he lets it go anywhere and everywhere. Now, 
Is he just rude and insensitive like I am, or does he have an actual medical problem? I, I think he has an actual medical problem because uh, you just can't be that gassy. <laughs> I mean, is this every day? Yes, every day. And he's lactose intolerant and will eat cheese or, or stuff like that. And his coworkers like, will tell him, like, Dude, why are you doing this? And he just... Why are there. you doing this? That's desperation at that point. Yeah. So, and I know, like, um, so he got a tattoo, a unique tattoo, uh, and the O is silent but deadly. And he makes that as part of his persona of, like, how gassy he is. I mean, at least he owns a man. If you're gassy, yes. you're just gassy. What are you going to do? Yeah, but he, he's not just that he's gassy. He knows the source of it. <laughs> right, 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 right. But still, <laughs> I mean, like, you like what you like, man. It's not the end of the world. But I've cleared out a meeting farting. The beauty was I was not part of the meeting. That's what I liked about it. They had two doors to get into the conference room. It's in the old building. It's probably 12 people in there talking about whatever they're talking about. I'm coming back for the little commissary we had, so I decided, you know what? I have to fart. I'm just going to walk into this conference room, kept walking, and just <laughs> all the way out the door. Meeting adjourned. And, of course, her club's like, why did you do that? I'm like, because I had to go, and I couldn't resist, and I thought it was funny. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. uh, our other co-worker, Brian Thorpe, came up and said, Thank you for that, man. I just wanted that meeting to end. I'm like, I got you. I got you. Pastor President, one thing about your significant other drives you crazy. 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Newsy. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, how are you? Hola. Hola, I forgot, sorry. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Appreciate uh, it. Super, super. For some reason, I'm like shaking talking to you guys. I don't know why. I probably should have admit that. No, you no, sound fine to us. And it's all right. No, yeah. I mean, you are on the radio, but, like, nobody could see you. And also, you might have yeah. rabies. You know, yeah. you can be anything. Yeah, and it's not like my name's, like, super unique or anything at all either. Yeah. So what uh, drives you crazy about your significant other? Well, so she, um, she likes to go to the bathroom, number one, and leave it in the toilet. And she says if it's yellow, she likes to let it mellow. But for some reason... Uh, I don't know. For some reason, I just don't like being on top of that. Wait, wait, and wait. Then for some reason, she, yeah. she intentionally does not flush when she pees? Correct. Because what was her reasoning for this? Uh, well, she tells me it saves water. And then, and well, then also, yeah. Apparently, apparently, if it's mellow, you let it... Oh, no. If, you, if it's yellow, you let it mellow. And I don't know what rhymes with the other one. Is this... Uh, oh, it's brown. Flush it down. Oh, that, that's a strong one, Mike. Even if you just made that up, that is solid advice. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been with this woman? Uh, actually, our anniversary is going to be on the 19th of February, so seven years. Seven years. And for all seven years, she just she ain't flushing her pee? Uh, yeah, not all the time. It seems like it always happens, but you know you always have that last pee for the night. Sure. And it's, that's kind of like how she likes to go out. Okay. <laughs> I come in the bathroom and it's like surprise. Oh, what if you like visit if you're like visiting your folks' house and you guys are going to spend a night? I mean, will she flush uh -huh. it then, or just it just never happens? You know, I don't know. I have to not to try that. Okay, yeah, because that's a, like. I can because if someone, you know, my daughter gets married and, and you know spends the night at the house, I can't imagine I'd walk out like, who didn't flush the toilet. You know, so like the family's not yeah. going to bring it up more than likely because you're not trying to embarrass anyone. But I think if you stayed here for three days and for three days, I, I would finally address mm -hmm. it. Like, I don't know who it is. Can you please flush your pee? Pastor Presence, one thing about your significant other drove you crazy. 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Sal. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Joe. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. So um, back when the Dr. Oz show was on, I'd be speaking with my wife. And I would try to educate her about any little factoid in life, this little fact or this little comment that I learned somewhere, and she would never believe me. And so, you know, the day or two would go by, and I learned that she would see it on the Dr. Oz show. And so, you know, the next day or so, she'd be like, hey, do you know what? And then she'd reply, you know, give me this answer like it was a fact and gospel after I had already told her the same thing but wouldn't believe me. Man, I think that's a universal it thing. Is. I, it I mean, is. Just... As long as the information does not come from you. I've said this a million times. I'll do a hypothetical here. Hey, um, 
I just found out, man. There's a place on uh, on the top of uh, near uh, Finney and Greenwood. You got to put in an order, and they have some of the best fried chicken in the world. But they make it individually, so right. we, and they have sides and stuff. Why don't we? Uh, okay, who told you about this place? Ah, uh, Ryan Castle. He says he's been there a couple times. Yeah. The best fried chicken. I, no, no, I don't want the. No, I, we, let's just get something else tonight. I don't want to go there. I mean, I don't want fried chicken. Right. A week later it goes by. My girlfriend just told me about this fried chicken place up on Finney and Greenwood. Apparently, it's really good, and you can order the chicken ahead of time and go pick it up, and you have sides, and you just bring it home. It's supposedly delicious. <laughs> That's anything. And you can say, who's the actor in this movie? Oh, uh, that was Christopher Walken. That was not Christopher Walken. Okay, whatever. Not going to argue. Two weeks later, my friend, she saw the movie. We saw the one with Christopher Walken, like, Jesus, H. Mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one? You are the movie of Christopher yeah. Walken where he's yeah. not Christopher yeah. Walken, that one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I can, you You're can right. be anything. If, if, uh, as long as yeah. it's not you giving yeah. the information, then that information I heard will be believed. Disney World is a great time. Who told you that? <laughs> Everyone. S Steve. <laughs> what does Steve know? Well, he was at Disney World. <laughs> right. I mean, what, what the hell? Disney World. <laughs> right. Who told you that? Yeah. Everyone that's ever been. Yeah. It's the most happiest place, place in the, on earth. In the United States except for Times Square. More people go there. Right. Steve told me. Oh, I don't believe it. He's stupid. Yeah. Who sucks less is coming up. We got your emails up next in the men's room at KISW.com. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. You've probably heard about generative artificial intelligence, but are you vigilant to its exploitability? Generative AI is shaping society and transforming our daily lives. While we want to embrace the potential, we must also set the standards for responsible use and safeguard the future of our digital world. Hacker One employs over 750 active ethical hackers that specialize in prompt hacking and other AI security and testing. The creative approach taken by a diverse pool of ethical hackers is the best way to discover vulnerabilities. When launching new AI deployments, let Hacker One's AI red teaming address the novel challenges of AI safety and security for your business. AI innovation can only be effective if models are tested for safety and security issues that could cause harm. Make sure your AI models and deployments can't be tricked into providing information beyond their intended use, and that security flaws can't be exploited to access confidential data or systems with Hacker One. Learn more about our AI red teaming today at hackerone.com slash AI. Coastal Farm and Ranch, we're just what the country needs. Join us for Chick Days and Save. This week only, buy three chicks, get one free, and save $10 off a Double Tough Poultry Starter Kit. Swing by for super spring savings on tools, mowers, soils, mulches, seeds, and more. Coastal Farm and Ranch, we're just what the country needs. Get more spring essentials for less, now through March 19th. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. One, two, three, four. Those are numbers. But you already knew that. If you want to know what number you're going to pay each month for your car, use Kelly Blue Book My Wallet on AutoTrader. They're really good at numbers. AutoTrader. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. 
The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Two socks last on the way, but first time for a few emails. To the Men's Room at KISW.com. Oh, you son of a... Calm now. Oh, my God. You've got mail. You've got mail. And a few from our question, past or present. One thing about your significant other drives you crazy. Guys, ever since I've uh, met him, my partner has these little quirks I've noticed that I both love and hate. The one that gets me the most is he walks the long way around anything to get to something he's very close to and he can reach out for. For example, if he needs the remote that's a few feet away from him on the island in the kitchen. He'll walk all the way around the island the other way to get the remote. He's done this with a car, uh, to the nightstand, or even outside. Just one of those quirks that makes me smile every time, even when I'm asking him to grab something for me, and it takes him a few extra seconds to go and get it. Uh, lots of love, guys. That from Chloe. I, I'm kind of guilty of that, and I don't know why. I still do it to this day, even when it's just me, like this morning. Like, you get up, you do some stuff, whatever, take your poop, then we get in the shower. I'll turn on the water. Now's the time I got to go put my socks specific. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, I can right. just leave them on the floor and take them out in a second. I don't know why. I got to go in and out of that bathroom like two times. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the best thing you can do is when you see something that needs to be done and you're minded of it in your head, just go ahead and do it. Now. Right. But so I'm just like, saying, I, I don't, but it's like, it's like I'm stalling to get in the bathroom. Oh, that's right. But, and I'm not, tr- like, I don't, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it, like, I've had it mentioned to me. I'm sure. And I yeah. frustrate myself sometimes. Like, <laughs> What am I doing in the bed? Why am I doing this? <laughs> Guys, my ex-girlfriend would scroll through Instagram and always play the videos as loud as whatever device he would using would allow and never turn the volume down, especially if I'm watching a sports game, TV show, but I just turn up the TV volume to try to compensate. But God forbid, if I did exactly the same thing to her, she'd lose her S and demand I'd turn my volume down as it was distracting her from her show or whatever she was watching. The hypocrisy drove me up a wall every time. Thankfully, though, my current boyfriend is not like that. Uh, cheers, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. That from Alex. Yeah, I've never had that experience. <coughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Can you please turn that down? Baby, I'm wearing headphones. But, yes, I'll turn it down. But if you're Your scrolling, headphones do boom pretty loud, though, bud. They do, but I still, I would turn it down a little bit. And I'm just sitting there but with the tickety talks that she's yep. scrolling through. And at least with mine, it's one consistent sound. You know, the TikTok thing, I hear, it's, I don't know, it's like watching a TV if you flip the channel every seven seconds. Right? I could just scroll they, from one to the, the next. And it's the same song, just different videos. Yes, right, I have, like, I have been in the TikTok loop. God. Oh, look, guys, my ex-wife started to that's baby. What, I was going to say, that's the other thing. If you ever date me, you'll notice. I don't know why. I don't use the term honey a lot. So if I say honey, <laughs> and, like, the hand comes out like that, like, the, like you know, like, honey, you've got to turn that down. Right. Mm-hmm. right? Honey like, means I'm over it. sitting on yeah. the couch. Uh, oh, look, guys, my ex-wife started baby talking during sex. Oh, God. Creep me the F out. Not enough to stop no. what I was doing, though. Did my best to just kind of tune her out. One of the many reasons that she is my ex-wife. <laughs> uh, baby talk's fine in the relationship, but in the bedroom in ain't the, the spot. Bedroom, dude. dude yeah. I, there was somebody that used to, that baby talked, and me and another co-worker found it just odd. Right. And then for some reason after the pandemic, that person doesn't baby talk anymore. Really? Oh, mm-hmm. They were probably told by the person they were stuck with. You need to stop. <laughs> yeah. You need to stop. I but, mean, I don't think anybody honestly does that for real. What, the baby talk thing? Correct. I know some girls do it. And like sometimes like Mike's right. Like you're doing it kind of like whatever. But like if you talk like that 24 hours a day, it's oh like. Oh, my God. You, something happened to you. Like there, there's a strange reason you're talking like that. Does anyone mm-hmm. ever old talk? Like, people always bring up baby talk. Well, they're talking Michael about baby talk. Yeah. You know, like in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Take Just off some of your pants. Yeah. <laughs> baby talk is one thing. My thing that, obviously, I don't get baby talk to a lot uh, in that capacity. My thing is dog talk. And I realize I'm guilty of dog talk as well. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, if I came over to your it's house. the same thing, yeah. Uh, what the hell's your dog's name again? It's uh, Molly. 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 Like the drug. Okay, so if I saw Molly, I'd be like, Molly, Molly, come here. Let me see you. Really? So I, 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 I don't speak normal, uh, like my normal I talk self. in the same tone all the time. I, no, I, I you know, communicate. Baby talk your dog? I communicate I different. Not I, baby I call talk. it dog talk. I don't yeah. baby talk my dog. Depends I don't on the baby dog. talk my friend's dogs. It's size, just... size of the dog matters. What kind of dog it is. It does. Different dog talk. But I find all baby dogs, I'm though. annoyed by it, and I do it. You know, like, I no. hear other people do it. I'm like, dude, what's up with the Do dog? you baby talk to dogs? You're damn straight it's dog You talk. don't just talk. Hey, look at this guy. Really? Yeah. yeah. All right. 
I don't baby talk, but I do do that. I don't know why. Oh, uh, look at this guy. Yeah, come here, little Stuff like that. I fart. Like, when I saw your dog... You get a little aggressive with your... Yeah, when I saw your dog... Would you like that? Would you ever do that to your wife if you're scratching her back? Yeah. Oh, do you like that? Do you like butt rubs? Ooh. Until she slapped me, yeah. Do you like your head rubbed? Okay. you never seen your dog out there and they lay out come and they on. get it out there? You never, you never got... You oh, big belly, stretch. You need belly rubs? Oh, look at all the nipples. Big stretch. But not in the weird voice, no. No, it's me. I'm admitting it. I'm like, I'm like, I know. I didn't know no, it's not about you, Miles. He's the weird one for not doing it. Apparently, I am. I don't tell me. I won't throw aside. Like, I'll talk to the dog. And be like, who's a good boy? And like, or like, get over here, girl. Yeah. But you're right. I don't think I, when I who's see your dog, you sound like more hey. aggressive on your dog talk. Yeah. I yeah. am. Look at the little corgi. You're like a coach. Yeah. yeah. Come here and get some of that. Right I'm here. always oh, fired up. Like, Do you like your guy. ears rubbed? Do you like your ears rubbed? Yeah. yeah. Like, you're going to go, yes, I like my ears rubbed. Ten yeah. thanks. Oh, I like the butt scratches. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. And I would do it to a girlfriend, but I've never been married. <laughs> All the guys had two words <laughs> Hallmark, the nipples. Hallmark movies, oh, particularly God. Christmas ones. She still has so many on the DVR, it takes a half an hour to get through them to stuff that I want to watch, and this is barely an exaggeration. We have unlimited digital DVR, so it will hold all the stuff. It hurts my soul to scroll through all that. Her counter-argument is that I watch documentaries, but I think Ted will agree that watching documentaries is not the same thing. Uh, Positive Valentine's, guys. That from Terry. Well, if you watch documentaries, you can actually learn something. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the entire point. As we move on to the, uh, to the birthday shout-outs. But y'all, today's my best friend Josh's birthday. I would like to give him a hard time about it being Valentine's Day and not his birthday. So please let him know it's okay if he masturbates with his own tears tonight, just like last year. Oh, God. Screw you, Josh. Thanks, guys. Wow. That from Jordan. He wants nothing else other than to say that. Wow. And gentlemen, today is my 53rd trip around the sun. Started my day with a spinal tap. Nothing like a lumbar puncture for your birthday. Mm. I've been trying forever to get so to do this for me, but alas, no luck. So how about a Leroy Jenkins, a fish sandwich, montage, and maybe some dad jokes for Miles. Rock on. That from Brian, the crayon-eating Marine. Can I get a fillet of fish sandwich? So you know I got I have a right. fish sandwich. Oh, brother, can I have a fish sandwich? Do I get fish you put the cheese and the tartar on the side. Oh, fish sandwich. Is it too early for a fish sandwich? A uh, cheese and tartar on the side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I smell the fish, fish sandwich. sandwich. Maybe some dinner sure? relish in the morning. Fish at noon. At noon. And at night. Can I buy you a fish sandwich? So you don't want a fish sandwich? Okay. Some dad jokes. I'll do one, then I'll do some Valentine. You guys aren't going to believe this. Every day I get hit by the same bike. Oh, yeah? Yes. It's a vicious cycle. All right. All right. My wife sat me down and told me how important Valentine's Day is to her. So I guess she must have something really big planned for us tonight. <laughs> oh, it's our job? I didn't know that. It's probably why I'm divorced. What did the chemist say to her Valentine? What did the chemist say to her Valentine? What did the chemist say to her Valentine? I think about you periodically. Wow. wow. And my son introduced us to his girlfriend, but she wouldn't say what her job was, just that she spent a lot of time with bees. I said to my mom, I said to my son, that's a, that's a keeper. <laughs> oh, all right. Get it. Yeah. Also, they were already laughing. I was like, wait a minute. Bees? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yaws of Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, uh, Schweinefly. Happy no. birthday! The men. Go ahead. No! Who sucks last? Yay! Time for Who Sucks Last. Steven Thrill, you bring us three stories from the news each and every week. They all suck. It is up to us to determine out of the three which one sucks the least. Now, if you happen to follow KISW on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, the debate is already underway on Who Sucks Less. Yes, indeed. Let's just get down to it. Let's start in Oklahoma, where a judge there agreed to step down after she was caught sending hundreds of texts from the bench while overseeing a murder trial and the killing of a two-year-old boy. But it included messages that mocked the prosecutors and were sprinkled with emojis. 
So Judge Tracy Soderstrom, she also agreed not to seek judicial office again in Oklahoma under the settlement agreement with the Oklahoma court on the judiciary. She had faced removal from the bench over accusations that included gross neglect of duty, oppression in her office, lack of proper temperament, and failure to supervise her office. According to the Oklahoma Supreme Court Chief Justice there, when John Cain IV, he recommended that she be removed following an investigation that found that she mocked the prosecutors, laughed at the bailiff's comment about a prosecutor's genitals, praised the defense attorney, and called the prosecutor's key witness a liar during the murder trial, again, of a two-year-old kid. So a security video showed her texting messages for minutes at a time during jury selection, opening statements, and testimony during the trial. The judge's text during the trial uh, on the charge of killing his girlfriend's two-year-old son, it included saying the prosecutor was, quote, sweating through his coat. The text described the defense attorney as, quote, awesome, and asked, quote, can I clap for her during the defense attorney's opening arguments? In all, she sent more than 500 texts to the bailiff. She also texted a laughing emoji icon uh, to the bailiff who, quote, made a crass and demeaning reference to the prosecuting attorney's generals. Uh, anyway... The person on trial was eventually convicted of second-degree manslaughter and sentenced to time served. Mm, okay. But again, this is during the trial, and you're texting the bailiff, so neither of you are paying attention. Now let's go to Ohio, where kids will be kids. And most of us, like, you ever throw a party while your parents are away? Well, you know it went sideways when it makes the local news. A TV station in Cincinnati, they just talked to a mom named Bridget Strahan after her kid's party got way out of hand. When she was out of town last weekend, her 18-year-old daughter, she threw a rager and made the invitation public, which is a rookie move. More than 100 kids showed up for it, and some of them decided to intentionally trash the place just to get her in trouble. So if it was like a broken base or something, Bridget says she wouldn't have been too mad, but she says it was legitimate vandalism. They ripped her kitchen counters off the wall. Jesus. Smashed a guitar, poured booze in her washing machine, super glued cups and cinnamon to the countertops, and some idiot, idiot ate one of her plants. Even worse, she says they puked it back up. They also stole a porcelain goose named Betty from the front porch that she loves. A friend gave it to her a while back, and someone from the party decided to hold Betty hostage. So they even made a TikTok video just to taunt her. They also taped a photo of the goose to her mailbox and wrote, We have Betty. Well, somebody on Facebook started a support group called Bring Betty <laughs> the Porch Goose Back. Porch goose. Yes, Betty the Porch Goose, Mike. <laughs> the beloved Porch Goose. Racked up about 4,000 members. But now one piece of good news. She found Betty dumped in the yard across the street from her daughter's high school rival. There's a hole in there that needs to be repaired, but she's still in one piece. Bridget thinks that she's a pretty good idea of which kids trashed her house, and she's in contact with the cops, so they could be facing charges for her. Okay. Ripped the counters off the wall. I mean, like, come. The on. cabinets off the wall? The counters. So she has counters to kind of wrap around the perimeter. Okay. They removed them from the wall. Wow. These things are still... Yeah, right. Come on. And speaking of kids, as the story goes, Carter's mother dreads getting calls about his allergy. When he was a baby, his family discovered that he was allergic to peanuts. Well, now he's a teenager. He doesn't leave his house, as she says, without his AirPods and an EpiPen in his pocket. His mom carries multiple EpiPens in her purse. She says she would have minutes to react if the dust and oils from the nuts came into contact with his mouth or eyes. Well, one of Carter's first football games as a varsity player at Lake Travis, that'd be Austin, Texas. Yeah. His mom got a call from another parent, and the parent told her some of his teammates put peanuts in his locker. His mother, Shauna, said, quote, he was already on his way to the game. I don't know if he's okay. I just need to know what's going on. Well, despite what happened in the locker room, he played in the game, but afterward, he told his mom about how peanuts fell from his jersey hanging in his locker. He told her how he quickly went to wash his hands before touching his face and how hives had already started to crawl up his arms, and she said she could still see the hives as he told her story. Quite, uh, quote, I think the hardest part was, one, it was his teammate. You know, you have this brotherhood in football, and it was disappointing that it was his teammate. Still later, she found out the teammates knew about the severity of his allergy before filling the locker. Quote, a couple of teammates on his varsity football team were asking about his allergy to peanuts and asked if it could kill him. He said yes, it absolutely could. So they went ahead and did it anyway. So more than a month later, she said that she stood before the Lake Travis School Board and she was living. The kids were responsible. They were disciplined, but she expected to be a different level. Basically, they were benched for some football games. She was told that the district's athletic director and head football coach were determining 
the discipline. Well, the district said it worked with another law enforcement agency and consulted the assistant uh, attorney's office, but ultimately the school police department decided criminal charges were not warranted. They say the boys were handed minimal consequences, and she explains to the school board, saying, since the incident, my son has faced backlash and retaliation almost daily. Wow. Let that sink Okay. So yeah. those are the three stories. All right. Let's so see here. The judge who's texting during the 500 text to the bailiff during a murder trial of a two-year-old kid. We have the kids in Ohio who intentionally trashed the girl's house because the mom was out of town, including ripping the counters off the wall, etc. And finally, we have the, I don't know how many different players on the football team, but at least one of the other teammates of this guy, knowing a mm. severe allergy to peanuts, and loaded his locker in Jersey with peanuts. I mean, I'm not... This is going to sound bad, but Lake Travis is a football factory. It is. So I'm not shocked those kids didn't get in more trouble. I, I, would, I, mean, I, I hate to ask this, but you almost want to know, like, what positions did they play? Were they Seriously. starters? Right? And I thought the exact same thing. Like, okay, yeah. this is Austin. Tech. I know why they did See, not get I in trouble. I think that one sucks the most because you could have killed a kid. And I know your, your, your high school teenagers just doing what high school teenagers think is funny. But when somebody but, says, no, this could kill right. me. Yeah, this, I this mean, is something. I, <laughs> trust me, I, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. It's bad. I'm just saying that's such a football school. Unfortunately, I'm not surprised the penalties. Okay. You're absolutely harsh. correct. Yeah. I agree so, a thousand So percent. no one died, but someone could have innocently. Yeah. Now, the second one I think is the worst is the judge because it was a murder trial. So someone had a two year old kid. Right. Exactly. That, that's horrible. The fact that she was just actually just blatantly like blowing off the trial one yeah, way or the other. I think that sucks a lot. So I'm going to go with teenagers being teenagers in Ohio. They destroyed some of her biggest mistake was that she put it up on social media. But I still think in a small rural town, depending on the situation, Word of mouth probably would have gotten out of those parties like they did in our day, and maybe the same thing would have happened. And at least the teenagers, A, they're teenagers. It sounds like they're from the rival school. That that seems to be the thing. But at least there's some humor in it. We have the goose. Betty the Porch Betty the Porch They right. actually call it Betty the Porch Because Miles is right, right? Like, that kid could have died. Yeah. Right? The 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 judge, I don't know how the judge and bailiff could be texting that much and nobody noticed. That's what I'm thinking. That seems very odd. Nobody, like... At some point, I would have been like judge or like bailiff. Like, what are you guys doing? And you can tell when someone's texting. Yeah. You know, if they're just looking down at their lap or whatever, you know. But then the bailiff responding to things, like 500 texts during the trial. And, I, and look, I, I'm with you. I feel terrible for those parents because they destroyed that woman's house. Yeah. But nobody got hurt. Correct. You, get, you know what I mean? Like, there's yep, got to yep, be some yep, way out yep, of that. Yep. I agree. Debate uh, continues on Facebook if you like KISW, also on Twitter and Instagram. Shout the day's coming up. You are listening to the men's room. Yo, next round is about to start. You ready? Yeah, yeah, just shopping for a car in Carvana. For real? Yeah, Carvana makes it super convenient to shop whenever, wherever. For real? That's a ton of car options. Yep, and these are all within my price range. For really real? You can afford that? Yeah, with Carvana. And boom, just like that, I'm getting it delivered in a couple days. For really, really real? You just bought a car. For real, and you just lost my turn. Visit Carvana.com to shop for thousands of vehicles under $20,000. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life, don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. As we start into the new year, a lot of people are looking to get healthier. That includes Hero Bread, delicious real bread with benefits. Hero Bread have just launched their new 
new recipe using heart-healthy olive oil. Hero Bread serves up 0 to 1 grams of net carbs, 5 to 11 grams of protein, and high fiber in every delicious serving. Made with natural ingredients, Hero Bread supports gut health, promotes weight management, and helps maintain blood sugar. All with no compromise on the taste, texture, and bready goodness you expect from your favorites. Now they're listening to their fans and updating their recipe with olive oil, an antioxidant-rich oil that's been shown to reduce cholesterol and minimize the risk of heart disease. Our products are just like the flour-based foods you're used to because they are made the exact same traditional way, using four key ingredient components and none of the bad stuff. Try it today with code IHM10 for 10% off your purchase at Hero.co. That's code IHM10 for 10% off at Hero.co. 99.9 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. All right, Tech Hunter, just minutes. We'll drink and toast for the shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way at 550. But first, quick check out Mike Hogg and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. Thank you, Miles. The town of Only England is uh, in the news highlighting their annual pancake race. What exactly is the pancake about this? race? So this, this dates all the way back to like the 1400s. Where there was some woman that I forget what was going on, but she she ran a skillet with a pancake in it, four hundred some odd yards to get into town or something like that. And so now every year they run like they, they have to flip the pancake at the beginning of it, run four hundred fifty yards, flip the pancake. Was it at yesterday? The end of it. Yes. Yeah. Well, again, if you're Catholic, the tradition is oh, you would eat right. pancakes and sausage on Fat Tuesday. Ah. Uh, so that's why I was like, yeah, that makes sense. It was yesterday. Gotcha. I'd rather do that than run a marathon. As far as being mm-hmm. inspired by someone running a distance. You know, hey, man, you can run 40 yards with a pancake and a skillet <laughs> or 26.2 <laughs> miles with nothing. <laughs> Hand me the skillet, my brother. I think the winner just uh, either set a record or something like that at like 63 seconds. 500 Wait. yards. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Cleared it, man. Squishmallows are uh, in a lawsuit against Build-A-Bear claiming that they're selling a knockoff of their product. Wait, Squishmallow's going after Build-A-Bear? Yeah, because I, I think they're they're selling a stuffed animal, or maybe it's the material that is the same as Squishmallow, or at least it's a, a Squishmallows, is, is that, to me, they all kind of, I thought there was like different versions. I didn't know it was just one company. There's, There's a, one company right. that is a Squishmallow, right? And right. they... My daughter loves these freaking things. Oh, yeah. Three or four of them, right? And they, They're good pillows. Honestly, man, yeah. Because I'm like, they look so stupid. She's like, put your head on it. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, man. oh yeah, I have seen those. Yeah, oh, yeah they okay. are. Right. They're stupidly comfortable. They just unfortunately look like that. They do. Doesn't your wife have one or something like we that? We have many. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's not surprising. <laughs> no. no. I was watching. She she actually bought me one because she would have this when it was a big old friggin' bee, and she'd keep it in the bed. But also because I got to such broad shoulders, she noticed that I was start, starting to hug it in the middle of the night so that my, my shoulders would you're stay hugging open. Your Is that what you're supposed I was, I was to do? Hugging hers. That's what I do. Hug, you know, hug the pillow? Just kind of keep the right, shoulders okay. open, right? All right. And so she bought me one, but now it's a lion and now the fuzz gets all stuck <laughs> in my head. In my, in my, Mike, I'm with you. I, I wake up const, er, countless mornings just hugging a pillow. Yeah. yeah. As a person who makes the bed for my children back in the day, I can't stand stuffed animals. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they all have to be put back, all nine of them. Right. In the right place. Oh, no. Yeah. They always end up on my side of the bed where nobody can see it. It's inevitable. Until it's, you know, we're, we're going to bed and I'm I'm kind of like your wife and where when I say I'm going to sleep, you got you to the count, you got the count of ten before I'm out. Can you grab my squeeze mouse? <laughs> <laughs> you ever punch one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, get a little frustration out. They absorb it, dude. Yeah, they just sit there and take it. I have never punched a squishmallow. Right, really? because I associate it with fist. my daughter, so I feel bad like punching her toys. You know what I mean? Like, can you use it as a regular wrong? pillow? Yeah, you could. I mean, that's, okay. that's what they're okay. for. Right? Yeah, they're, they're not for punching. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, people punch regular pillows. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. They they do degrade rather quickly, though. I've noticed that the, the interior of them is not like your average pillow. And what so, do they look like inside? I don't know. I don't the know. dog good. every once in a while will grab one, and I'm like, you cannot do that because, mate, well, my daughter will kill you. It'll be ruined, you bet. Are they squishmallows or squishmallows? Mallow. Squishmallows. All right. Yeah. Mallow. Three in five Americans who are actively dating say dessert is a non-negotiable must on a date. All right. Which doesn't... Eh. I mean, who's going to be angry if you eat, if you went out for dinner, even if I don't want dessert, if you want to get dessert, get dessert. Well, and then you never get dessert when you go out anywhere. Think about it. When's the last time that you went out to a restaurant and then you got dessert? You're usually too full for it. If you're on a date, you're already not going to eat a whole lot. Let's get the dessert. It depends. If I'm not, I'm more likely to get a dessert if it's just me and the wife. 
That's fair. Mm-hmm. Right? For whatever reason, it's like, all right, man, let's do the third course. But the problem with that is it becomes this negotiation where she is not hungry. I go, that's cool. I'm going to get dessert anyway. Well, if you do get dessert, get this one. But, but that's not the dessert I want. But I'd like to try that. Like, then you need to ask the kitchen if you could try a sandwich. Yeah. I don't want to order dessert I don't want so you could try a piece of it. Why don't you just order it and we'll take the rest home? I still think I'm it just depends hated. on the place. Then we're going out yeah. for, like, a nice meal. Then, like, yeah. Dessert. It's, That's it's a dessert. Yeah, right. Oh, is that a pizookie? <laughs> What's a pizookie? That is basically one of those little uh, skillet cookies. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Over at BJ's, dude. They're little tiny ones. Oh, they're great. They're fantastic. That, I'll always that do, that espresso. Ooh, you bet, dude. I'll always do the creme brulee. Because one thing we figured out, there's always room for it. Mm-hmm. Even when you're stuffed, it's like it's like Tetris. It'll find a place in your stomach, and you won't feel disgusted. The wife has to have churros. If we go to a Mexican Ooh. spot, we have got to have churros. If they if they have churros, we do get that, churros. Yeah, that's not a bad one at all. <laughs> but we usually take those home. We rarely yeah. eat them at the restaurant. You know what? While we're Hell, if I go to Jack in the Box, I get the churros. How are those? <laughs> They're crummy churros, but they're still delicious churros. <laughs> <laughs> they're the worst churros you've ever had, but they're awesome. And they're so no. fantastic. Yeah. And at midnight on a Saturday, they're oh, freaking awesome. You bet. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> right. The one you didn't, the couple you didn't eat the next morning? They're fine. Right. <laughs> Was it the best sex you ever had? No, it's still sex. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say authentic. They said we sell churros. <laughs> <laughs> and they're great. <laughs> right. Oh my god! So since we're talking about romantic things, we actually have a list here of it because it is the romantic season. It's the time of love, and it's time to do romantic things with romantic people. So let's get into it. The men's room top ten. The men's room top ten. The ten most romantic things to do with your partner. Oh yeah. I fancy myself a bit of a Casanova. Do you? So I once penned my betrothed a poem and performed it for her before we were to retire to the boudoir. I'm not shocked. Your golden tresses caress my pecs. I wrap myself around your neck. Okay, now it's getting weird. An aggressive nibble on your ear. (sighs) Oh, God. You gasp out a sign of fear. (laughs) As my feelings become bolder, you'll always be looking over your shoulder. Happy Valentine's Day, darling. Oh, good God. He's like a Batman villain. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. She doesn't know it, but we've been together for years. I see you, Batman. <laughs> Damn. So these are the... Uh, the I haven't Mandy. committed a crime. I'm just really creepy. <laughs> How long you guys been together? Ah, dating for two years, but watching her for five. <laughs> she smells different when she's awake. Damn. <laughs> so these are romantic things to do with your partner. There's actually a whole bunch of things that are on this list. They, but some honorable mentions. They got booking a quick weekend getaway, seeing a concert, taking a dance class together. Miles, we actually covered a handful of these earlier today. Yeah. Taking a cooking class, going wine tasting at a vineyard, enjoying a couple's massage. Side note, kind of weird. But a couple's uh, massage sucks. Because your eyes are closed all the time. Your face is in the doggone pillow. I don't really need to be in the same room with me. No. What if I want to roll over? <laughs> <laughs> go into a uh, drive-in movie, getting drinks at a bar with live music. Play there you go. Play tourist in your own city. That's underrated, man. You know, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Do you know why there's no live music on Valentine's Day? Because they have dates too. That's yeah. a fact. I mean, good luck with that. <laughs> Piano player. Hit the road for an unplanned day trip. Visit a museum. <laughs> 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 oh, Jesus. Okay. No. We know what to not ask Mike. Not much change. Have a fun time. Pack a picnic lunch. Uh, recreate your first date. I, uh, not a bad thing, depending on your date. I can't be that. I'd have to get really drunk. Let's see, it's Wednesday. I can't black out. <laughs> <laughs> My boss is going to be mad. <laughs> right? What was your first date? <laughs> Mike? Uh, so, not kidding. We met for the first time at Red Festival years ago. And our first date, we went to the Swiss down in Tacoma All right. uh, to watch a Seahawks game. She was vegan at the time. And I ordered the spinach artichoke dip, thinking that uh, that was vegan. It's not. It's not? It's got cheese and <laughs> dairy cheese. and all oh. stuff in it, dude. Come on, dig in. Crosby, Stills, Nash. Was that your first date? 
Yeah, and Ted was with us. Would you go? Uh, would you go see him? <laughs> oh, I thought Friday. I thought I met with you guys at Fridays. Fridays. That's that story you tell. I was sitting. It was just me, you, and your wife at a Fridays in Towson. <laughs> Crosby stills and Nash was like a week later. Was it a week later? I'm pretty positive. We'll see what you I text. trust your memory better listening. than mine. She'll tell that's you what your honest. first date was. That's, that's kind of the whole joke when you say it was on your first date. It's yeah. Literally, there was three of us sitting there. <laughs> Either way, you have to be there. Maps to recreate our first date. Here's Ted. Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Oh, Jimmy Buffett date. and Meriwether Post Pavilion. You were wasted that. away in Margaritaville. I had a blast. <laughs> you sure, can't have dude. a bad time. Whether you like him or not, or them, you don't like, I, I don't mind the music. It was fun. It was, people had blenders in the parking lot. They were throwing down. Man. It was all older people. And I don't know. I know Tommy Bahamas from uh, Seattle, but you don't recognize the Tommy Bahama lifestyle until you move to Maryland, <laughs> Virginia, the eastern shore of Maryland. Everyone's just got these ridiculously awful shirts on. They all have collars. They all look like S. <laughs> and they wear them all the time. And it's just, it is the most annoying thing ever. Oh but you get God. all these people together and have a good time. Jeez, oh whiz. It really is. It's like a Hawaiian shirt factory in the middle of, you know. Romantic things to do with your partner. They go with uh, renting bicycles, riding a Ferris wheel. Especially if they're scared. That gets fun. Order takeout and light some candles. Uh, cue some romantic movies. Ferris wheel's fun downtown. Absolutely. That's I still great... haven't been on it. Oh, it's Bro, awesome. Worth it. I mean, it's fine. I like a just different view of the city. Hey. You know? Yeah. Uh, stargaze. Can't really do that around here. Uh, That's pl- when you uh, you stalk celebrities. Oh, oh, there he is. I see him. Plan out your dream vacation. Make each other breakfast in bed. Watch the sunrise together. Don't get up that early. Uh, Hang on. You can stay up late. Make each other both breakfast in bed? Isn't the kind of the beauty of it is that somebody's made it for you and brought it to you? <laughs> Good call, Ted. <laughs> Seems odd that if we're both going to make breakfast, we might as well just sit out. Let's here. just get up. <laughs> if we're, we're, we're both up in the kitchen. Let's just call this we're up. Uh, How about this? Uh, you know what? We'll change it up. And This morning, I'll feed you a breakfast sausage. <laughs> uh, leave little notes in unexpected places. <laughs> Those get fun. Uh, read breakfast po- sausages? <laughs> read poetry together. <laughs> is Take- that for a real... Oh, yeah. Read poetry together. Oh, and you can also take a nap afterwards. Take turns giving each other massages. And that usually leads to stuff. <laughs> <laughs> stuff, kids. Stuff. stuff. Yeah. Careful. That's a slippery slope. It is. Oh, God. If you do it right. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like there was one time where she said, can you give me a massage that doesn't lead to sex? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> The idea of me gripping up on your body. Like, what do you think's on my on, mind, dude. man? Take a bubble bath together. I'm too big. Can't do it. You you got to have a nice. You got to have right. a tub. You gotta have, like, yeah, you got to have a real tub. Uh, the standard tub is not made for two adults. <laughs> it's not. Slow dance to romantic music. Write a uh, shared bucket list. That's kind of weird. A shared bucket list. Things you both want to do? That's not a bucket list. A bucket list is an individual. Thing. Right. Hey, you might want to Unless you're talking about places up. you want to have sex. Well, you can make a Places. bucket list together. Mm-hmm. But you need to do All this right. in the next three yeah. years, Mama. Make a scrapbook yeah. with photos and mementos. Jesus Christ, no. Pick Remember wild to- flowers. Do scrapbooks what? are for psychos. Paint flowers? <laughs> Pick wild flowers. No. But then the number one most romantic thing to do with your a partner. A mouth hug. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, man. We go through all this to get to one point, right? It's so like if we just start with that, we're good. That's we a good beat that. That's a good tip. <laughs> that's a great tip. Just the tip. That's what she said. Go to the farmer's market. Oh my god. Oh. I'm sorry, I kinda like going to the farmer's market. Yeah, I think it yeah. yeah. Oh look, twenty dollars for one steak. <laughs> Thanks. I'm glad you fed it with whatever the hell you think makes it worth that much. I went there last Sunday, good the one god. in Ballard. Small little vacuum packed thing, like God damn, man. Like, I'm going to Safeway, brother. <laughs> I'll buy your cheese, but Jesus. <laughs> That's what I bought, cheese. Seriously, I'm like, I'll buy your mushrooms. I'll buy your cheese. I don't want kale. It's winter. I bought top kale. and out of cheese. I bought some cheese at a farmer's market because it was called like 12th Man or Hawk's Cheese. All right. How was it? She's like explaining it. I was like, doesn't matter. Right. Good <laughs> enough. So I, I think I said, you. is this related to blue cheese? She should have said it doesn't last long. And she said no. And I said, okay, like basically save the pitch. 
I like the I like Farmers the idea. Market, they have to do it. I just wanted to buy top and not off this guy. Hey, come like, on. Ooh. This th- top and I'm like Jesus Christ, dude. I know what top and not is. Authorities in England stormed the local hotel after hearing that there was a man wielding a large knife, but were stunned with what they found instead. Miles, what did they find? Tell you all about it at five fifty. Thank you, sir. Headlines are coming at five fifty. In the meantime, let's get a contestant on the line for profile. This at two zero six eight zero three Rock. Have we made it to drinking time? For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. We've seen a lot of change in the past 20 years, but two decades later, Mountain Dew Baja Blast is still a fan favorite, bringing you the bold tropical lime flavor that folks can't get enough of. It takes you back to a sunny day at the beach with every delicious sip. And don't you want that feeling all the time? Well, 2024 is the year. In celebration of their 20th baja anniversary. you can sip Baja Blast all year long. So pick up a Baja Blast wherever you are. In stores now. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. Over 13,000 people in the Seattle area are homeless. Brian is helping to make a difference through Seattle's Union Gospel Mission. I was addicted to meth, sleeping in my car, and I couldn't take it anymore. I got off drugs, earned a bachelor's degree in theology, and have almost completed a master's in counseling. Today, I'm the director of outreach at the mission. And grace will lead me volunteer or donate visit ugm.org one two three four those are numbers but you already knew that if you want to know what number you're going to pay each month for your car use kelly blue book my wallet on auto trader they're really good at numbers (laughs) auto trader at metro get an iphone 12 with 5g and a dual camera system for 99.99 take amazing pictures and share them instantly and don't put up with life's yada 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 like photo bombers, zoom, crop out, yada, yada. and bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro. Bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. What's up? It's your boy V Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve at Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we chose 25-year-old Mark Cowart. Of Nashville, Tennessee. Coward, not coward. All right. So police got a call that a man was watching porn on a school computer at Vanderbilt University Divinity Library. Now, while en route, the police got another call that the same man was now actively masturbating in the same library. Mm -hmm. Well, when officers arrived, they found our boy Mark sitting at a computer watching porn with his sweatpants down and his hand inside of his boxers doing the five-knuckle shuffle. Again, it's not like he's sitting in his car in a dark parking lot. He's doing this at the college university library. Now, he did admit to officers that he was masturbating when he really didn't need to do so since they saw him doing it. And he explained that he was, and I quote, horny. Now, we're toasting him because he was arrested on the spot and he was put in cuffs. But Mark was able to slip out of the handcuffs thanks to the copious amounts of lube that was all over his hands. <laughs> now, he did not try to get away. I want you to understand, in spite of the cop's inability to keep handcuffs on his hands because they were so slick with lube, he was arrested without further incident. 
they were just like, basically, we're going to take him out without handcuffs. We cannot keep these on his wrist because my man was <laughs> super lubed up. Astro Glide. My God. You think it's Astro Glide or KY? Uh, probably Astro Glide. It, uh, yeah, it's, a little it's easier to put in your pocket. Yeah, I guess. It's man. a little. I mean, just for the cops are like, what are you doing? Not it's that like, I know that. I'm not resisting arrest, man. Just, I can get out of these. My hands are so lubed up and shiny. I like that he brought <laughs> props, too. <laughs> he went all in, bro. Yeah. He had everything but his own computer. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down, down the hola, bitchola! The men's room presents Profile This. Hey, it's Steve Throw Hill. Could you please, everyone, how Profile This is played? <laughs> sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Jack. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. All right, Jack Attack, you understand how this year game is played? Yes, I do. Fantastic. You have a choice of one of three stories. We have the wonderful world of drugs. We have interior decorating, where you guess the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. And finally, we have animalized this, where you guess the animal responsible for causing the problem. All right, I'm going to go animalize this. <laughs> All right, here's the story. We go to Minnesota, where a firefighter rescued an animal that wandered out onto the ice and fell through into the freezing water. The fire department there said the firefighters were called to assist the State Department of Natural Resources rescue the animal that was struggling to stay above the water. Well, a firefighter donned a special rescue suit and ventured out to assist it. And according to their Facebook post, it read, quote, this suit is completely waterproof with a watertight hood, gloves, and attached boots. The insulation and buoyancy of the suit allows us to maintain mental and physical capabilities for long periods of time in icy cold water. Anyway, a video shows the firefighter giving the animal a boost back up onto the ice and then starting to guide it back toward the shore. The animal was successfully removed and saved. The question is, what is the animal that they risk going out on the ice to save? Was it a deer? Was it a dog? Was it a pony or was it a fox? So deer, dog, pony, or fox, what did the firefighters rescue from the ice? Mm, okay, where was this at? This Minnesota. is in Minnesota. Where in Minnesota? Minnesota? I don't know. Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I think I would go deer. Deer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Final answer, Jack? Mm, yep. Okay. Ted? Did the suit fail? The suit did not fail, no. Oh. Okay. I don't know. You were very specific about what, like, what the they suit was put made it in there. They, they was, wanted us to know that it's airtight, watertight, all this stuff. I'm like, okay, I'll share that. I guess <laughs> it works basically. Is what right. they said. I was like, where's the other? It hammer? does what it's supposed to do. Uh, you know what? I'm with them. Going deer. deer? It's got to be a deer or a, or a dog. I don't see anybody like. What was the other one? A pony, dog, okay, pony, or horse fox. number two. But I just don't see a pony getting out on a lake. So then I'm going to go pony, Ted. I think what I, Ted is saying is Ted wouldn't like, save a drowning pony. Yeah. For whatever reason. There, there's ponds on farms. Fox. There's lakes. Minnesota's got lakes everywhere. So if you have a... Land is in those lakes. lakes. Yeah. So the question is, what got uh, trapped in the ice? Was it a deer, a dog, a pony, or a fox? We'll find out next. That was a tease. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. One, two, three, four. Those are numbers. But you already knew that. If you want to know what number you're going to pay each month for your car, use Kelly Blue Book My Wallet on AutoTrader. They're really good at numbers. <laughs> AutoTrader. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. 
If you don't take yada yada in life, don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and nada yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. All right, so the categories analyze this on Profile This. We got Minnesota firefighters who put on the equivalent of, I guess, like a Minnesota ghillie suit. I rescued an animal <laughs> that fell through the ice and needed help. The animal did make it out. Question is, what was the animal? Was it a deer, a dog, a pony, or a fox? The problem with the description, those suits are kind of common in other places. I'm, but, Just like, I was like, why did they add all that in there? I, I don't know. I'm reading the thing, and I'm like, okay, I will share this with up on it. Basically, all they said is the suit worked as it is designed to do. All right. Hey, that, that's the purpose of wearing it, right? Uh, but, Jack, that's the very question that we posed to you. Uh, what animal was it? Now, we'll start with Miles Montgomery. You went with the pony. Pony! Not a pony. But you're right. Look, if it were a pony, it would have been a I massive response. I figure it's going to be the weirdest one. Right. I mean, that's the uh, way I lean on this one. And, Jack, you said deer from the top. V. Ted Smith agreed with you. I don't know if that's always a good idea, but it is today, my friend. Yes, nice. Okay. It was in fact a deer. Also, yeah. I just think if you have a pony, you probably have it fenced in. What you is the so. animal that they would not save? I've seen them uh, recently save elk, moose. Right, but I'm the fire department, so you know. Polar bear. You say deer? <laughs> well, yeah, like he's on his own, bro. I mean, what animal do you turn down? The, so, look, honest to God, I'm working the fire department. I, the, the 911 dispatch hits me. Hey, man, animal in the frozen lake. All right, we're on it. It's a possum. Like, the possum's going to die. Have you guys seen the videos of them cracking the alligators open in the Oh, yeah, where they're, yeah. Oh, and in Georgia, that just cold. to make sure that they can kind of get out and breathe. Did you see the killer whales? Was it like in Sweden or something? Got stuck. Yeah, did they ever get out? Do we know? I don't know. It was a Never pod of killer whales. It was crazy, man. And I, I don't know, but... They had breached through the ice, but they're all in one spot. But the ice sheet was so long. And they're not sure they mammals, can make it past it. they got to hold a breath, right? Yeah. So, yeah, they kept coming back to this hole. It refreeze. A couple of the bulls would smash it back out. And you like the little babies popping up. And I'm like, I haven't seen a follow-up story on that, man. But it just it just bugged me. Hey. It did. Yeah. Now for all TV news all the time. Time for TV time with T. And now. Because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. The Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah. All right, your choice is you got the Jimmys. Fallon and Kimmel. Seth Meyers. Colbert. <laughs> Tomlinson. Or Ted Smith. <laughs> oh. Oh. Is it Ted or is it Larry? It's right there. It's always guys have teams and talents and writers help them come up with monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine is this an actual late night joke and from whom, or could it be a V. Ted Smith original? Now I just screwed up. I'm looking at these names and I don't think some of them match up. Some of them. I have to guess a couple of these jokes myself. Good job, Ted. This is fun. Yeah. I you're, you're playing your own game then. I am. <laughs> you I guessed just, today. I just kept guessing the same one. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this is exciting. A woman spent two years to complete a cross, cross country walking trek, becoming the first woman to walk from Delaware and ending in California. And related news people are now just walking out of Delaware to get as far away as they can. Ted? <laughs> or Seth? No, 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 I'm not guessing. I'm asking. Do we want to guess? No, no, no. I <laughs> still guess. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, Ted Smith. Myers. That was me. Damn it. I was hoping you would get that. Because it's the truth. Outside of the beaches, Delaware sucks. It does, but he likes to make fun of that part of the country. Yeah, he's from, what, that's New what Hampshire, I was trying to yeah. right. Oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Bitch, set me up. <laughs> Mary and Barry. Yeah. The CDC is dropping uh, guidance on people that test positive for COVID that they need to isolate for five days. Basically, the CDC went to a Super Bowl party and saw your uncle knuckle deep in the queso and realized no one's listening to us anyhow. Colbert. Fallon. Fallon. The CDC is going to drop their guidance that people who tested positive for COVID should isolate for five days. Basically, the CDC went to a Super Bowl party, saw your uncle knuckle deep in the queso, and were like, you know what? No one's, no one's listening to us anyway. That's just gross, the queso. I mean, if it was guac, I could imagine. One out of three Americans believe aliens is living amongst us. While in the same study, two out of three Americans said 
Aliens do not live among you, and I am an American human person. I enjoy sport and have blood. Please take me to Taco Bell for bean meat. <laughs> uh, Fallon? No, Sid Come Myers. Go bear. One out of three Americans Damn thinks it. aliens live among us. While in the same study, two out of three Americans said, aliens do not live among you, and I am an American human person. I enjoy sport and have blood. Please take me to Taco Bell for bean meat. <laughs> Be neat. <laughs> On Valentine's Day, it's easy to see who's been married for a while because instead of going out for dinner, they're like, we got three layers of the seven-layer dip left from Sunday. You want to split that? <laughs> uh, Kimmel. Fallon. That is Fallon. On Valentine's Day, you can always tell who's been married a while because instead of going out to dinner, they're like, uh, we got three layers of the seven-layer dip left from Sunday. You want to just <laughs> split that? Bottom three layers are the best, anyhow. They are. <laughs> Researchers at an aquarium report that a female stingray is pregnant without being in the tank with a male stingray. It's the biggest miracle at the aquarium since the Sturgeon Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Meyers. Yeah. yeah Seth Meyers. I believe that is Seth. Researchers at an nice. aquarium in North Carolina have reported that a female stingray is pregnant despite being in a tank without any male stingrays. It's the Biggest miracle at the aquarium since the Sturgeon Mary. <laughs> so stupid. That is good. That is good. Stupid but funny. Yeah. Yeah, I figured I looked at him again, but I don't know. I just got fired up and just wrote Fallon. Colbert, Colbert, Fallon. All right, uh Miles Thrill. Have you guys watched Breaking Bad yet? No. No. Okay. Mike and I love it. Mike got me into the show. Uh one of the main characters there, obviously, or one of the main actors in that is Brian Cranston. Mm-hmm. Uh, his character on the show is obviously a terrible person, sells meth, and there's some murders involved. But Brian Cranston <laughs> when himself... When you put it like that. <laughs> I know. Brian Cranston himself was once wanted for murder. What? Yeah, I know. Malcolm in the middle. Turns out it was a lineup. <laughs> <laughs> Him. In the 70s, uh, he and his brother decided to drive across the country on motorcycles. At one point... They ran out of cash in Florida. By the way, I, I should have looked this up. Where did they start? Because going cro coast to coast doesn't seem like you'd end up in Florida. That seems like you're going up and down the coast. Right. Or well, went they down were the Arizona coast, maybe, Mexico, to then right? head to... God damn it, you're right, Miles. He started in New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Should have looked it up myself. <laughs> Anyhow. Through the pizzas on the house. That's a show, right? Right that to our tent. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So they get stuck in Florida. They're out of cash, so they work at a restaurant. Uh, there was a cook at the place named Peter Wong. Everybody hated him. Uh, so they used to joke around about how they could kill him, and nobody would find out. Well, a few weeks, uh, a few weeks at the restaurant, the, uh, Brian Cranston and his brother, they, leave, they get enough money. They take off for Maine. Not long after that, Peter Wong turned up dead. It's loving you as Wong. Uh, the cops are interviewing people at the restaurant. Obviously, a lot of the murder talk uh, was determined uh, Wong had died uh, around the same time the Cranston's left. They were officially s suspects. There was even an APB put out on them. Mike, what is an APB? All points. points. Bullets in. Bang. Yeah, there you go. I figured Eagle Scout would bang that out no problem. I hate to well, get that There's badge. no prime merit badge is the problem. Exactly. Oh. I wish there was. No felony badge. Uh, at that Slow point, ones. right, the, the brothers were, uh, the Cranston brothers were at some time, someplace in the Carolinas. <laughs> they never knew about it because the real killer uh, was caught before the police caught up to him. Yeah. So Scout. basically, the cops in Florida are like, hey. We really need to talk to these two. They talked a lot about killing this guy. They put out the APB. They're suspects. But by the time they find them, they'd already got the actual killer. Yeah. Good, man. If you look at the law school uh, suits, the Boy Scouts just have the underage sheriff badge. Yes. Oh. 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 <laughs> Katie, Katie Perry. What? Katie Perry is probably leaving American Idol after the upcoming season. She's been a judge since 2018. This will be her uh, seventh season. And Why did she bug me so much? I, I don't I know. don't know anything about her. Like, I know who she is and all that kind of thing. I know she did the song Firework, Fireworks. That's literally the only she's song done I know. She's done a lot. I know she's done a ton. Just not my thing. No big deal. But every time I hear her speak, and I do not know why, it's not that she says anything mean. 
when I hear her speak, I'm like, I hate you, and I don't I just, know why. I don't like the songs because it just seems like she's screaming the entire time. I I, really, I I couldn't even talk about her music. I don't know. It's good pop music. She's attractive to look at. I'm a Katy Perry she fan. She is all of that. But somehow when she speaks, I'm like, yeah. shut She's up. She's got all well, the stuff. Uh, brunette. Bl- uh, blue eyes. Yeah. All the things. Mike blue, saw her perform at the Super Bowl. I did. Oh, I was did shocked you? this weekend. I don't, I've just never asked Mike this. And then he, we were talking about Katy Perry. And he was like, yeah, I was there. And I was like, you saw Left Shark I in was, person? I was there for Left Shark. Yeah, yeah. I saw the legacy unfold. Yeah, Left Shark was just one of her backup dancers. Yeah. Two sharks. Left Shark got kind of lost. Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I trust me, I was pumped. You got to be kidding me, Mike. <laughs> so basically, she was on Kimmel Live on Monday. She said, I love Idol so much. She connected with me in the heart of, uh, connected me with the heart of America. Right. But I feel I need uh, that pulse of my own, uh, own beat. That's fair. Yeah. She said she'll be forming down in Brazil at the Rock in Rio Festival in <laughs> September and hinted that she might have some new, new music uh, coming up. Obviously, American Idol's premiere in its 22nd uh, season. That's coming up on Sunday. If you want to check that out. That's an impressive run for a show. Yeah, and it's not that in our, in our lifetime. I mean, you know, like Survivor kind of. Oh, sure. for Idol. You know, like just, yeah, for Idol. Just yeah, the yeah, time for... length of the, of the fact that they've been very doing a very good job for a long time. They Well, remember, they canceled it for a minute and then mm-hmm. somebody else took it over another network it was like yeah it's still getting ready weren't mm-hmm. they on what fox originally and abc right and now they're on abc okay All yeah right. so they were just like okay but that the judges do kind of rotate in and out paula abdul is that a different show now she was an american idol host she okay. was but there like you look at like simon was there right and randy jackson right mm-hmm. uh but like some of them like the voice has had a few different people come kind of come in and out but that Mike, you've watched more of those shows than I have. That seems about right, like seven or eight years, and then they're like, all right, bring in a new judge. Pretty much, yeah. So Idol right now, is that Blake Shelton? No. No, he's, he's, he's on the on voice, the, he's and on the he's voice. not on it anymore. That's right. So American Idol is... The original. Richie, uh, what's... Uh, Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie. Uh, her, I, Katie Perry. I don't know. Yeah. Katie Perry. And... Well, Katie Perry's oh, like, still on there. Yeah, She's yeah. just kind of hinting that she might be done with it. I don't know the other judges. I thought it was... Yeah, I don't know. Luke Bryan? Oh, it's maybe? Luke Bryan. Like, Is it Luke yeah, Bryan? Yeah. yeah. Luke okay. Bryan. Luke Bryan. But, I mean, that's so funny because, like, I know all those people for their music. Sure. Paula Abdul, American Idol was so big, everybody watched it. Yeah. But I have not watched a ton of The Voice. But, I mean, Aguilera was a host for a while. The I Voice know, is a better show, in my opinion. I do. I was going to say, I do know that was one of Kelly Clarkson's thing. She's been a judge on The Voice. But she's at, from American Idol original. That's how we correct, know her, right? Correct. Okay. First season. Okay. Uh, but she, she, I guess when in that divorce it came up, that like, or I guess her husband at the time was like, "You can't be a judge," and like she was like, "God, it pissed me off." <laughs> yeah, she can sing her. I don't like her music, but her voice, man, she can sing her ass Give off. Give me a sure. meatball. She can, right? She is, she is a very uh, powerful very good singer. singer. Yeah, now, you know what? Stick with a little uh, pop music here. Uh, now listen, this one's tough for me because I, I enjoy Britney Spears' body of work. Uh, <laughs> There are but, things about her I like. Right. But then she put out a book, a memoir, and she, you know, she was kind of getting on Timberlake. Remember, they were a couple right. forever. And then right, a lot of people get on Timberlake because he made, you know, Cry Me a River video that looked like, you know, it was Britney cheating on him. Now, I don't know what to believe with Britney Spears because she's kind of crazy. So she was like... Kind of. Right, because like a week ago, she put out something that was like, oh, it's good to see Justin. Maybe some things weren't true in my book or something. And now, she, and then she came out like a day later and was like, no, he definitely cheated on me. <laughs> so anyhow, there's some talk that he might go do a tell-all interview on Oprah. Justin's not happy with the way things gone down. He wants this new music speak for itself, but that's clearly not happening. So if Oprah does an interview, who airs it? Is it still like the Oprah network? Like she used I to be she syndicated. Still does have so, the own network. Okay, she does. But if you're Oprah, I feel like you well, can I mean, go to any of the yeah, networks and say, was, "I have an interview. When, do you when, want it?" Which she was, you know, on for twenty years, right? Mm-hmm. So she was a syndicated show. If you're ABC, NBC, CBS, and you're market, if you wanted to pick it up, sure, it didn't matter what major network you're on. You just showed Oprah before the no- news. Right? Yep. So I don't know where... I think it's the same thing. I think Thrill just said it. Like, I think she just does the interview, and then whoever's the highest bidder... Because like, she's yeah, Oprah. ...kind of gets it. Okay. Yeah. You know what? It's funny, too. Like, Oprah gets really big interviews, and I get it. But, like, sure. when I was a kid, Barbara Walters was the one that got she all the interviews. She was the one, right. And it was kind of a joke, because people would always cry. Diane Sawyer. There was a couple of those guys. Diane Sawyer did, or but... Gals. 
No, but, but Barbara, Barbara Walters, Walters was, that was the like, facto. You know what I mean? It's like the sit down with Barbara Walters. Right. It was a big and, deal. And, and, and they didn't tell you anything about the interview. And I think she did. Barbara Walters talks to D. Ted Smith. They don't know who you are. It does not matter. They're watching it. And I think it was Barbara Walters that traditionally would do the ones right before the Oscars with a lot of big stars. Yeah. I just remember it was always like a thing. People were like, I said I wasn't going to cry in this interview. <laughs> now I'm crying. <laughs> but I feel like Oprah definitely has that... Uh, that kind of title now. And Miles, look, you're not wrong. Diane Sawyer did a ton of good interviews. Yeah. There's other people out there right now doing those interviews. But we're, it's we're like, if you sit down with Oprah, you know you're getting yeah. like the, the unbelievable full whole story. Yeah. Oprah told- talks to Meghan Markle. Yeah. Right. That yeah. kind of thing. Exactly. So I the think stuff that- I hate it as a kid. I think Tonight. Timberlake's that big of a star. It's like, if he wants to go do this tell-all interview, then obviously he's going to sit down with Oprah. But I get the- it. But like, bro, it was like 20 years ago, man. Yeah. And she's crazy. You, but she, you have no idea. Britney Spears has a massive fan base. Of course. And like Timberlake's just tired of some of this stuff. I mean, some of it wasn't right. even about them. Like talking about the way he would talk to black people. And she had this whole story. But it's like, oh, I told you he was this and that, trying to act like he knew black people. And I forget who it was. It was another art singer. And that singer came out. It might have been Genuine or somebody. And he was like, no, nah, man, I remember that day. J- Timberlake's school with me. There's <laughs> right. something odd about it. He's from Memphis. <laughs> so remember, me and Temperley talk, we, we speak in English accents. <laughs> oh, dear. Hello, John Stan. <laughs> Hello, Trill. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just how we roll. Thank you, Tim. We appreciate it. You're listening to Men's Room. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Maximize the compensation for your injury claim with Phillips Law Firm. With over 80 years of combined legal experience, they won't allow the insurance companies to dictate what's good enough for you. Whether it's an auto accident or workplace injury, contact Phillips Law Firm today. If they don't win, you don't pay. Oh, should we start this show? Yeah, I'm down. Just buying a car in Carvana first. Oh, for real? Yeah, it's super convenient. I already got pre-qualified in two minutes. All I had to do is answer a few questions. Ooh, that's helpful. And now just customizing my down and monthly payments. Ooh, that's a very fair deal. Yep. Boom. Just bought a car. And you get to take me to the Carvana vending machine in a couple days to pick it up. Ooh. I'm kind of busy. Visit Carvana.com to finance your next car. Financing subject to credit approval. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. An Illinois man breaks up with his girlfriend, then wins one million on a scratch-off game. Meanwhile, a man in handcuffs in a cruiser is shot, and it's nutty who gets the blame. Pastor was giving people free meth if they could just watch their sexy time. Turns out the manager at a Walgreens in D.C. was in on the crime. And a, quote, gangsta throws up pizza all over at Denny's, which is news. Denny's has pizza, and it's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, job start. We go overseas to the U.K. where authorities got a troubling call. The call came from a local hotel where witnesses are reporting seeing a dangerous individual wielding an intimidatingly large knife. Armed to the teeth, authorities stormed the lobby of the hotel and were able to track down their would-be assailant. But the team was quickly called off after they established that their dangerous individual was actually just a Harry Potter enthusiast and had armed himself with a wand. <laughs> oh, come on. Just a dork walking around with a dog on wand. <laughs> We're, everyone relax, well, just the nerd. <laughs> well, and how do you mistake that for a knife? I, I, what kind of knives do they have over there? Right. We have brown and black ones. He's got a foil. <laughs> right. Maybe like a fencing foil. Like, yeah, what that's the, the closest thing, really. A right. magic wand. <laughs> and He's a got knife. a saber. <laughs> so she him sees down. him in a park and then calls the cops. Yeah. And he's got a Harry Potter wand. Harry Potter wand. Yeah, I like Harry Pond Vaughn. Harry Pond Vaughn. Harry Pond Vaughn. Boy, hey. Where's your pond one away? Bloody. I'll come off it, you old bag. <laughs> Put that thing away. Jesus. You're going to hurt someone with it. <laughs> Crumpets. In other news, it's insane story. It's called a muffin. <laughs> 
I know they're different. All right, I'm just making a joke as an American. It's just the bottom of an English muffin, right? <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> when you lose the tie, <laughs> call it a crumpet. You can still charge just as much. <sighs> we won the war, Ted. We can call it whatever we want. You know what? You're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> Insane story out of Florida. A man decided that uh, he would air out some dirty laundry on the day to get right. This one's crazy. About three years ago, authorities were called after the man attended his local church went to the front of the congregation, grabbed the microphone, and he confessed. He looked at the parishioners and pastor, asking for their forgiveness for what he did to the pastor's 12-year-old daughter. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Unfortunately for him, the group wasn't quite as forgiving as he hoped that they would be, and uh, informed him that there was still a debt to be paid for his sins, and authorities were called. He's not going, to th- going through the court system. And I was trying to be like, I said it in front of a religious individual, so that's inadmissible. Like, bro... This wasn't this wasn't a confession. This wasn't a sit down with a with a one on one. You went to the front of the congregation, and it's admissible if even if you didn't if the priest chooses to push it forward. Hey, I'm glad right. you didn't say that for the good news. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thankfully, there's good news. Thankfully, Jesus. for more religious figures, we go to Connecticut. Don't worry, this one's not near as bad. A local pastor was stopped by authorities after it was discovered that he was driving on a suspended license and had also failed to maintain the insurance requirements. The pastor did end up arrested for the infractions, but the hole went deeper as officers noticed that he had some extracurriculars on his person. Uh Uh-oh. Methamphetamine. (laughs) The pastor does. Methamphetamine in both rock form and liquid that was in a needle prepared for injections. Isn't he Methodist? Oh. Just saying. He is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right there in the name. He He was. He's Methodist. Got it. Mm. Well done. Uh, What's more? No, he really was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he, got, yeah, he's he, he really was a Methodist pastor. Yes. Yeah. What's more, his officers discovered that he wasn't necessarily using the narcotics himself, but he would sell them behind his church in exchange for watching couples have sex. Jesus, mm. man. Can I? Well, he's tax free in life. So I just he's watch got that going for So that was his so, excuse. I don't yeah. use meth. I just sell it to sell people it to and them. watch them. I don't have think sex. it's an excuse. I think it was just saying, yeah, I just sell it to people out back so I can watch. I think he's high on meth and still sold it to watch other people have sex. Yeah, but I'm with you. At no point do I think like, oh, you've just. Never. I didn't read in the story that he was that he was high on it, but you know what? I wouldn't put it past you, Ted. I just I was. That's a story. tough one too. It's like I don't know. You don't see people like crackheads. You got they smoke a lot of crack. Right. I feel like you smoke some good meth. You're just up for days. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I haven't done in a while. Watch a couple have sex. <laughs> Come on out behind my church. I'll sell yeah. you some meth. Have some sex. And it's rare to see a drunk person. At some point, you saw them with a drink in their hand. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Right, this adds up. Down to Arizona for a rather sad story. Someone walked up to a local Denny's after noticing an individual that had managed to pass out in front of the restaurant. Covered in regurgitated pizza. He threw up all over himself and passed out right there in the parking lot. The civilian woke up the man and asked if he was okay, to which the blacked out fellow responded by claiming to be a gangster and challenged the man to a fight. Walking away from the situation, another woman came over and uh, told the man that he had to leave, and after he refused, officers were called. They arrived to find him stumbling about, still claiming to be a gangster, and the officers took the vomit-covered gangster into custody. Dude, reassess. I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster. gangster. You puke pizza all over yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Denny's pizza. (laughs) I I mean, where was the story, though? Arizona. All right, none of that adds up. Oh, and if it have, was Jersey, I'd go. Hey. And my Miles, I know, I know, it's part of the joke. Do they actually sell pizza, or did he just eat pizza, throw it all up over himself in front of the dentist? That, that was, was actually that, that was my joke. Okay. Uh, Denny's, as far as I know, does not serve pizza. Okay. So how did he <laughs> end up in a Denny's and throw up? So he obviously had pizza. He, he just worked out some pizza yeah, exactly. and just hurled all over himself. Actually, he was in the parking lot. So oh, I God. It. Just in case those stories left a bad taste in your mouth. Thankfully, there's good news. Well we go done. To, we go to Illinois where one man's life has been turned around. He was feeling a little down in the dumps as his girlfriend had recently dumped him. And uh, just a few days before Valentine's Day at that. But things all took a turn when he caught the bug and decided to buy himself a scratch-off lottery ticket that hit the jackpot for $1 million. Damn. He said that he panicked when he saw that he had won, claiming that he almost called out of work that day. (laughs) (laughs) I want a million dollars. I ain't coming back. (laughs) He told the media... (laughs) He told the media that he had nobody to share the big news with as his girlfriend had recently broken up with him and he'd been keeping his jackpot a secret as best as he could, which don't blame him. Don't want to give that thing up there, man. Men's room sports. Not a whole lot on locally here tonight, but you do have some hockey over on TNT. Basketball on ESPN and college hoops on the other ESPN channels, CBS Sports and FS1. As far as your weather goes, mid-30s tonight, and the rain is due to start up in the middle of the night into tomorrow. Not expected to clear up as early 
as uh, tomorrow afternoon. So he's going to be a wet one there. Pack, pack a jacket. That's it for headlines with that. Mike Hawkins out. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time for Return of Big Dummy. And the head chef is back with Ted's Meat and Potatoes. Kevin Deers up next. Yes, indeed. It's all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A Double Flush production. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts, so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. We've seen a lot of change in the past 20 years, but two decades later, Mountain Dew Baja Blast is still a fan favorite, bringing you the bold tropical lime flavor that folks can't get enough of. It takes you back to a sunny day at the beach with every delicious sip. And don't you want that feeling all the time? Well, 2024 is the year. In celebration of their 20th baja anniversary. you can sip Baja Blast all year long. So pick up a Baja Blast wherever you are, in stores now. As we start into the new year, a lot of people are looking to get healthier. That includes Hero Bread, delicious, real bread with benefits. Hero Bread have just launched their new recipe using heart-healthy olive oil. Hero Bread serves up 0 to 1 grams of net carbs, 5 to 11 grams of protein, and high fiber in every delicious serving. Made with natural ingredients, Hero Bread supports gut health, promotes weight management, and helps maintain blood sugar. All with no compromise on the taste, texture, and bready goodness you expect from your favorites. Now they're listening to their fans and updating their recipe with olive oil, an antioxidant rich oil that's been shown to reduce cholesterol and minimize the risk of heart disease. Our products are just like the flour-based foods you're used to because they are made the exact same traditional way, using four key ingredient components and none of the bad stuff. Try it today with code IHM10 for 10% off your purchase at Hero.co That's code IHM10 for 10% off at Hero.co Hero.co